clear skies once again. How amazing is this? It's well, this is going to be. I'm going to be amazed every every night of the week right now because it's looking to be fantastic weather, and I couldn't be couldn't be more happy with how things are turning out for the weather. Finally, it's taking that that turn. We have consistent clear skies, um, low humidity, and just perfect conditions for some astral photography. And we're just gonna have some fun. I think last night was uh, was amazing. It was just a, a good time with some people dropping in and some good conversation that happened. There. It was just a really chill night, and I got absolutely nothing done. <laughs> so yeah, always always fun, always interesting. I am Tom. I am the Astro Canuck, and tonight we are touring the night sky, taking live images from space with an eight-inch telescope, and that is. That bad boy right there, we've seen the little tiny screen and that little image, that little point of light that we're seeing on there, that is Mars. And shortly thereafter following will be the moon, so we will probably be doing some lunar observation. And I've never done that with this telescope yet, so that'll be interesting to end even with this camera, so it's going to be really interesting just to be seeing the moon with this camera through this telescope for the first time. And I think a, a lot of the, the area that we're kind of going to be, we usually be shooting at towards the east is going to be taken up by an 88% uh, waning moon. So we will, uh, let's see, yeah. If was it 80 no, it's 95 percent we're still we still have a lot of moon out there but it's uh, overall the weather looks looks great but uh, even, there's no there's almost no wind and yeah maybe a little bit of wispy cloud in about an hour kind of might roll through but i don't think there's anything that's going to really have an impact on what we want to do tonight so yeah there's uh, there's there's tons to see um, I mean, possibilities are mildly endless tonight um, in, until the sun goes up. But I don't think I'm going to be going that late tonight. But we'll see what uh, what time we go to. And then I think what I what I will do at the end of the night is I will pick a target, and that will be I'll I'll see if I can spend. Let's say I wrap this up around like midnight, maybe midnight or midnight 30 and I'll pick a target that's going to be available for for the rest of the night and we'll see if we can image that and then I'll uh, kind of use one of those Im use that image for one of the rainy day astronomies and we'll we'll uh, we'll process that one a little later on in the week so as always I I actually know I, I, I need to go back a step here and thank everybody who has followed and uh, spread the word about this channel and those who have subscribed we have six subscribers now on the channel and I I can't thank I can't thank them enough and it's it's one of those things where it, you you don't have to subscribe but I really appreciate that you do and that you're kind of you're putting that it's it, it's a it's a small amount of money but at the same time it means so much because you you feel that what I'm doing is, you know, worth your hard-earned money, and I appreciate that. So I, I, I can't say that enough, and I, I'm just so um, humbled by how the communities are around Twitch, and you know, you talk about people being in toxic environments, and I've seen so much positivity on across across so many channels, and yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's incredible, Capone Gaming. Or rather, doing the homeschool thing with the kids, but got you tabbed. Have a great stream, my man. Capone, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for the lurk. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I also, uh, we have a, we have two new followers, two new members of the observatory. We have Daryl671 Lizama. Lizama. And we have Ari, 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 
I'm butchering. I'm, I'm terrible with, with names on the first go. Arij Khan 9. Arij Khan 9 is <laughs> God, I'm terrible at names. Um, so, you know, the more complicated your name is, the better the, the better it's going to be, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but, yes, we are going to be taking some live images of space. And, like I said, we, are, we have clear skies the entire night. And probably... We'll see how uh, how long we go for. I think last night was about three and a half hours on just chatting about almost nothing. So we'll uh, we'll see how the evening goes. Also, if for some I've tried I've tried to sort out my um, uh, Wi-Fi or my wi my uh, internet problem. So if things kind of do cut out for some reason, I will be back. It's come back in the past and. Things seem to go okay. Usually, actually, when I really start up a stream, uh, the connection goes down, and it, it looks all right for now. But um, yeah, if everything, if there is a bit of buffering, hang on, I'll be right back. I'm uh, not planning on going anywhere. And uh, if any, if if the whole router blows up, I'll let you know. Don't worry. But for the most part, yeah, we are we are good. And it looks like there's already some buffering. Gosh darn it. <sighs> That was, that was incredibly well timed. That was ridiculously well timed. I, I <laughs> someone's listening. Internet provider's listening to me. Boy, I sure love consistent internet. Let's see how that goes. I should start a timer and see how long this lasts. If it's consistent, then at least we know. My gosh. That's great. It'll go one direction. Okay, let's try this. Yep. For some reason the transitions do not want to work the way they should. So I'm going to... I'll wing it with those there. So right now, what we do have on the uh, up on the ASI Air right now is a little tiny picture of Mars, because I I like Mars. So I'm going to start an exposure on there, and here goes my encoding is overloaded because this is just eating up all the the broadband for some reason. But I will get this. I will get this sorted out. I will make sure that this thing runs so smooth. That you'll swear you're watching butter. It makes sense in my head. <laughs> so yeah, we are looking at Mars right now with the ASI Air. And that is through this telescope right here. And that tiny little dot just above the scope is the red planet. Still at a close... Still in a uh, close orbit with, with us, so we're able to get a great view of things. And yeah, I kind of like to it, just where it is because it's going to go behind the tree, uh, behind the tree shortly, and yeah, we're just going to end up losing it. But for now, I do like to have the, uh, the camera on there, and it is a little uh, a bit of a cheeky move to try and get an image of this because I am using the original version of the ASI Air. A Raspberry Pi controlled computer and which has all the all the software built into it so I think the new version is the one that has the video capabilities and I'm just I'm just using what is the, the the focusing tool so you're able to get a move that out of the way there you're able to get a good shot of the red planet because when you are imaging planets you want as quick of a frame rate as possible because otherwise if you're going too long, everything starts to blow out in the uh, in the brightness there, because they are so planets are going to be so much brighter than uh, than stars are at proximity as well. So once the uh, once the moon comes up as well, we're going to be washed out of it. So I think I'm actually it's it's great to be on Mars. However, I think I am going to find a new target there, so we can at least get some images going before the moon really starts to make an impact on us. 
But yeah, I just loved it. You can see, you can really see some details coming out. And for the most part, the atmosphere isn't too unstable tonight, which is nice. So at least we're, um, we're getting some nice, fairly stable images coming through there because there is that, um, the atmosphere does, it's always constantly in motion. And when you're trying to get these images, you want to have that, that, that um, calmest point in the atmosphere. So you are, uh, you get those fleeting glimpses of a nice, uh, sharp image of the planet, and then, and then you're you're at the mercy of the atmosphere. So let's uh, we'll back out of there. And that should uh, immediately improve some of the encoding because that then it's not f firing all these uh, this information back to the, to the computer there. So at least I can. have a uh, Arij Khan. Hey, how are you? Did I pronounce that right? If you were here earlier, I apologize for getting your name totally wrong at the beginning. <laughs> Thanks for, uh, thank you, thank you very much for following. Thank you for joining the observatory. Arij, that's cool. That's all right. We'll go with that. Yeah, thank you very much for, uh, for, for following, thank you very much for joining the observatory. Uh, I am here at every opportunity possible to take some images of the night sky. And I, all these images are coming in live from, like I said, this telescope to my left, your right. Uh, imaging thing, we are going to image as much as possible. I take, uh, I'll do about five to ten minute exposures and find some targets in the sky. And tonight we're actually, probably for the first time, we're going to be doing some lunar observations because we're still at a 98% full moon, I think I said. 95% uh, waning gibbous. So we are going to be looking at the moon for a bit um, and then maybe trying to find some targets that are at least out of the way of the glare from the moon. So I think uh, I do want to have a look at where we're at, what we have available at the moment here. Because yeah, that moon is going to come up over the roof line fairly soon. So let's see, I'm going to, um, using Stellarium, which is a, uh, a free, free planetary tool, planetarium uh, tool that'll let you kind of plan out your night sky. And there is another program that was suggested to me, and I have downloaded it, and that is Carte du Ciel, which is Sky Map, or Sky Chart, sorry. And apparently that's supposed to be a little easier on the, uh, on the system, make it uh, just kind of um, have less of an impact on, the, on your hardware. So let's try... That's the blue snowball. I never actually looked at the blue snowball nebula, so we are we'll give that a shot maybe and see how that goes. Because usually I want to, you want to capture some bright nebula, which always it's going to look a, a little nicer on the camera. However, I do like to go for the targets that are less than uh, well, kind of less than popular, really, because I want to maybe we'll see what's uh, what is available. Maybe it'll look good. Maybe it won't. But uh, you know, we'll give it a shot and see what happens there. Seven six six two. Let's see. Yeah, we're past the meridian on that. However, it's a tiny planetary nebula. But you know what? Let's. Um, Let's go for it. Let's see how that is because it's early in the evening. We have plenty of clear skies ahead, and yeah, usually I don't uh, always go on the opposite side of the meridian, which is the uh, kind of that line where the telescope is either going to follow or um, you got to flip the scope in its orientation. So it's going to Let's see how that goes. It should know where it is. I have done my plate solving, so it does know what's up so yeah if you do have uh, any questions that you have feel free to ask um, you know it's just a, a bit of a, it's an open forum really i'm just taking the pictures and 
sometimes conversation will just veer off in some direction and eventually we'll kind of get back to to imaging there so it's just the easy going easy going place we're just always looking to just have a good time really so choose the target there So the telescope does have to, to move to the other side of its orientation, so that takes a little longer than, than usual. But uh, I should I should like fake it and look over to my left, so it looks like I'm looking at the scope. Aha! Look at it go! Uh, and really, it's my monitor's over on this side here. On this side here. <laughs> Right, uh, roughly what part of the UK? I'm in the uh, east of Essex, and uh, yeah, we have we have a, a clear stretch of uh, night skies ahead of us. So it's it's been very very unsavory weather for the past few weeks. So it's been uh, hit and miss for the most part. Right, so it says we are centered on our target. All right, it's a tiny little thing. But that's just, uh, that's just, a, that's, we're just centered on the, the target at the moment. So I want to, want to make sure that we are, let's get, let's get dead center on that. little hiccup there. Now, uh, for, yeah, for some reason, if the signal kind of cuts out for a second, I'm going to be back. It's uh, unreliable internet at the moment for some reason. It was, it's been fine the past few weeks, and then just in the, the last couple, last few days, everything's kind of gone a little crazy, so I do need to get that sorted out. So I am using a 8-inch Richie Kretchen design telescope and also using an ASI, uh, a ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro. So it does have a square sensor, so we do have the, uh, you know, it's, it's just that whole square format, so we don't have like the, the, the wide field view. Um, no, this is the point. Just, you know, chat away. Uh, sorry to keep on interrupting. Don't be sorry. It's all good. It's all good. I uh, got another question. I've got a 300 millimeter lens for Deep Sky Astro, and it's uh, sufficing well enough. I would like to go to deeper imaging into the universe and possibly planetary, since I'm in Portal 6 7. So sometimes planetary is the only option. What focal length would you recommend for starting a Deep Sky Astro? Uh, for planetary, you, well, the, the focal length that I'm at right now, um, and I was looking at Mars just at the, at the top of the broadcast there. And we're at 979 millimeters. And I was looking at Mars. It was just the, uh, just kind of a video view of it. It wasn't really taking any um, images to process from it there. But yeah, if um, depends on what kind, how how deep do you want to go? I mean, 300 millimeters is great for catching uh, some of the, the nebula around um, that's around the shoot. So. Um, yeah, planetary, you're almost looking at like um, two meters or even three meters just to be able to get some uh, detail there. But when uh, also at the same time when you are shooting at that, at that focal length, you are having a slower focal ratio. But the brightness of the planets are kind of offset that as well. So, um, yeah, if you, want, if you want to start going into deeper imaging, you're going to need to 
you would want to have a, um, a tracking mount. Like at 300 millimeters, I was using my Star Adventure, uh, just a little, just a little Star Tracker, and it was doing all right at 300 millimeters. But uh, until I kind of got the the mount that we are using right now, um, it's. I mean, there's a lot of the uh, the equatorial mounts that are a lower price point. I got the Omega Mini Track. All right, so that's that's the. The manual one, right? You just kind of always wind that up, and it'll it'll track. Um, I mean, that's stuff like that. It's great for uh, definitely great for doing wide field, and even um, how how long of an exposure are you getting for um, uh, at three hundred millimeters? Because I guess that's obviously going to uh, to be a factor, especially well if you are in a Bortle. Six seven, you aren't going to want to do very long exposures anyway, so you're going to want to stack those up considerably at uh, at a lower exposure time. And also, by no means am I an absolute um, stunner on <laughs> on astrophotography. However, I do like to share as much uh, of my experience with this as possible. So I have been doing astrophotography for the past four years now, and. I've picked up a, a little bit along the way, so it's just me sharing my experience, sharing uh, some of the stories. So, yeah, it's. Um, I would say it depends on like what your goal is going to be. So, if you do want to do planetary, um, getting a, a little larger mount, like maybe even like a something like a, a Skywatcher HEQ five, is still going to uh, serve you really well for. For things, um, and I, I, offhand, I don't know what the um, the weight limit is on that one there. So, yeah, it's you're gonna be looking at um, yeah, like longer focal lengths. And my first telescope was um, fifteen hundred millimeters, and Saturn was still a fairly small point of light, but I could still see the rings in that there. Didn't get a chance on Jupiter. Haven't. I don't really get a chance with Jupiter. However, because um, just the way how my back garden is set up, uh, I really only have like a view to the east and to the um, and to the north. So it's um, yeah. I got limited limited skies, and unfortunately, I do miss most of the planets. And really, Mars is at just such a uh, a, a great position right now for me. And yeah, any chance I get, I'm, uh, I'm just observing Mars with the with the camera. All right, I'm going to start the exposure. It looks like this thing is, might actually really be a very bright planetary nebula, so this might almost blow things out there. But we'll see how this turns out. We usually start doing images at um, ten minutes. And that kind of, uh, in the end, gives us a fairly decent picture. And let's see, let's see. I mean, the camera crew is barely, barely doing anything right now. So I might even try bumping up. Uh, I am auto guiding. I am using a 50 millimeter guide scope. It's the, uh, the Skywatcher 50 ED Evo Star, or Evo Guide, sorry. And also using the ZWO uh, ASI 120mm Mini. James Vade, how are you doing tonight, sir? Good to see you here. Uh, how much work is it setting up the ASI Air with your mount and including dithering, plate solving, and auto guiding? To, like I said, uh, I was saying last night from setting up from absolute, if I, if I have everything packed away and I start setting things up. I'm usually ready in about, if I'm taking my time, I'll be like an hour and a half, kind of getting everything all together there. But once I plug in, once everything's all set up and I plug it into the ASI Air, it is, I will, I'll just go through the steps of what I do. I'll turn on the, plug in the ASI Air, it's already on, connect it with the, uh, with the tablet, and plug in the camera, and the main imaging camera is already daisy chained into the um, 
into the guide scope guide and the guide camera so it's that saving a USB slot on the on the air itself and the mount is connected so there's only two USB uh, slots that I'm using on the air right now so that's the mount and the two cameras and uh, that's job done so those are connected fire up the, the program and it's click to say okay that the, everything's all there sync the mount and that's almost about it I'll turn on for these nights I don't do any calibration for the for the guiding because I'm not changing the orientation of anything at all so it's it's really just refresh to get the camera going and yeah it's it, 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 for, did, compa I did start I did start with PhD 2 uh, early on and it took me an entire night to get that figured out and it was pretty frustrating and I ended up I ended up doing no imaging that night and it wasn't almost until halfway through the next night when I got that sorted out and first night with the ASI Air it felt so intuitive and, and really easy to kind of get going there and it really was like point click here's your star and you're off to guiding and then you can play with your settings a little later so um, I know there are people who's, who've had like some uh, I guess bad experiences with the with the air however I think that might have also been earlier builds of the system so um, but I think they've come a long way with this and I think the uh, the worst part was about with with the ASI air was an update that was done um, last year about a year and a half ago now and they released the update and unfortunately the company had gone on holidays so um, there was no support for this and people were left in the lurch where this the, their system wasn't even working people were um, you know they're out trying to do imaging and the the air wouldn't even respond and it, it got frustrating however they, they once they got back on track everything got sorted out and it's been it's been everything's been working really well now and it sounds like my astrophotography problems can't figure out press here dummy I was curious about the ease of use of the air thanks for the response yes I I really can't say how much more enjoyable things are with the air uh, I mean, I'm, I was happy to be outside with the uh, with the computer and all that, uh, all the peripherals. However, it was I was leaving my laptop outside, and it would, you, know, you get I get little um, flowers and berries that kind of fall off the tree. It's just leaving a, a sticky mess. I'm not gonna finish that sentence. Um, it would just I didn't want my laptop being left outside, <clears throat> and it's the only one that I would be using. So. The like old laptop wouldn't even run all the software, so it's yeah, it's just kind of made things a lot easier. And like I said, when I go outside tonight, when I started, I almost was able to start uh, a lot earlier. Um, however, some with resetting my router, I had some problems. So hopefully, it was going to solve what was going on with the uh, with the buffering that you guys are going to get on the other end every now and then. But it hasn't quite solved that problem because it's already I've already dropped out a couple of times but yeah it's um, so I had to reset the security camera it changed changed the IP address and it's a bit of a pain to reset everything on the computer there so but otherwise I am up and imaging with the ASI air in, in minutes uh, less a polar alignment which my pull up People will swear by the polar alignment programming um, or the, the system within the air. I tried it once and was frustrated. And I only stopped for the once because I do have a pole master, which is I'm, 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 I'm polar aligned within five minutes or less most nights or when I've set up. So my combination of things is I do use the, uh, the QHY pole master to get my alignment done and then everything else is with the air and it's for overall for me it's been a, a more positive experience than anything and I haven't tried out the uh, the pro yet so I'm not sure 
how large the uh, the difference is in between these uh, the two items there. But pardon me, it's yeah, definitely um, just one of those products. I'm thinking, yeah, if you if you you want to be able to kind of image thing get get uh, get on track as quickly as possible and you know you, you save some time you're you, know, you, you can you can you can be warm in the house um you, you can still freeze your um your butt off outside if you want that's totally fine um i still do that whenever you know get me up get the opportunity more bring out the warm woolies and um yeah just uh, snuggle in and look up at the sky but I think it, it's just been, and um, yeah, it's such a, a, a pleasurable experience with the air, and just being able to quickly pick a new target. I know they they've added more um, more items to the catalog, which is really good. I, I like that because that's uh, taking a little less a little less time to pick up the target. Where before you would have to add, enter in your right ascension and your declination coordinates to get a specific target. Now I haven't seen if they've put the um, something like the uh, the tulip nebula in there, but uh, I have to see what what um, category that's in. Although that is out of my range for the season. But just to. Uh, just out of curiosity. Actually, I'm going to wind the clock back a bit, right? classification there. Let's see. Yeah, because if you can you save a little bit, because also um, Sharpless 2 101. So yeah, then yeah, the Tulip Nebula is going to be available in this catalog. So I will, uh, we got 30 seconds actually before the um, exposure is complete. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put a pin in the tool nebula at the moment. Uh, are there any particular advantages in using an EQ mount over an alt as? Yes, the alt as is basically going to give you your up and down and left and right. Uh, and it's fine for doing observations. I have imaged with the, um, with an alt as mount, I did start off with one. However, I was limited to about maybe 10 to 20 seconds at best of an exposure length. Whereas when you're using the equatorial mount, it is designed to be focused on the pole, on the, on the North Star, and follow the, um, the rotation of the Earth, or at least a counter to the rotation of the Earth, so that you can track a star and everything. It also um, takes into account for the rotation correction because you would need rotational correction and using an alt as because while it's tracking you know, left and right we're still kind of returning and the image is going to rotate in there whereas with the uh, equatorial mount you are getting a perfect track along the uh, you know, along the um, your right ascension so it's uh, yeah it, uh, an uh, equatorial mount is much better geared towards um, long exposures because if you have a, a well balanced mount and great guiding and there's other mounts that don't even require guiding and you can start going for you know, 10, 20, 40 minutes um, if you're lucky on things so yeah I think I started off with the alt as and it was great for observations um, it would be alright for shooting short exposures on bright images I got some great pictures uh, with the uh, of the moon with that uh, it was Celestron Nexstar 127 SLT and it's just the just the automatic go-to scope 
and I thought it was a, overall it was a great purchase to begin with and because it just kind of took a bit of that guesswork out of finding the stars and I moved to the star adventurer or more of the lateral movement I still had both of the, the mounts together there but the uh, the star adventurer kind of helped me out with learning more of the night sky where each where certain objects were so you, you know, I was learning star hopping so I know if you're using that uh, the Omegan mini track then you are you have to manually pick your target so it's in in that respect it, it's a good way of getting familiar with the night sky uh, whereas you, know, you, you get the, the go-to mountain instantly all right let's go over to Andromeda okay great there we go okay now let's look at the um, um, let's look at the uh, any other target uh, let's look at the triangulum galaxy and a good little uh, jump to the south and there you go but yeah it's um, to me that kind of combination of uh, having that go to off the bat took out a lot of the guesswork from the beginning but I did want to be able to learn more so uh, people also say that you know polar alignment can be a bit of a tricky thing and if you have like the right app and you kind of you, you get a good feel of what you're looking at through the eyepiece or through the, uh, the viewfinder to do your alignment it's overall it's not a it's not a hard thing to do there because either you know if you are still tracking you still you still need to get the uh the pole star aligned with that mini mount right so there we go. let's uh let's have a look at our image of the blue snowball nebula Is a fairly bright, bright object there. And yeah, the uh, I am using the filter I'm using is a tri-band one-shot color filter, so I am just getting the uh, using the hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, hydrogen beta wavelength, and uh, hydrogen alpha is about uh, twelve nanometers, and the oxygen three and H beta are kind of a combined wavelength there. So it is a little, uh, um, a little wider on that band pass. And I am always interested in changing filters and trying out new things um, and trying to get a, a hold of the, uh, the L Extreme filter at the moment is a little difficult because uh, people can't really keep them in stock too well. So that's, uh, one of those things to keep an eye out for, but I think my next filter purchase down the road is going to be a better broadband filter, uh, just to kind of get as much of that uh, of those wavelengths, the useful wavelengths as possible there. So for those of you who are just tuning in, thank you very much for jumping on the stream. I am Tom, I am the Astro Canuck, and we are imaging live pictures of space tonight, and this is what we, object we are currently looking at is the blue snowball nebula and i've lost its information <laughs> uh, sorry, we are on ngc 7662 so at uh, longer focal lengths it's probably you probably get a little more a little better resolution on this and it is a it's a very bright planetary nebula. Um, so a little information on this is the Blue Snowball Nebula is a planetary nebula located in the constellation of Andromeda, about two and a half degrees west southwest of the star Iota Andromeda, and it is a fairly popular planetary nebula for casual observers. Like for visual observation, it's probably be a nice one to look at with the, with the large scope. Uh, it's bright, large, somewhat elongated, with apparent dimming at the center, and a very faint central star. A small refractor will, will reveal a star-like object with slight nebulosity. The angular structure is more obvious with, with averted vision. Averted vision, when you're doing a, a visual astronomy, 
is that if you're looking directly at the at the at the object you're looking at, you're actually not going to get as good of an image. Whereas if you kind of look just off, just off center from it, and that just has to do with how um, the receptors in our iris, how we how we process the imaging there, that it's actually kind of brighter um, bits of information that will, that will be collected. Um, just kind of off to the sides uh, of the eye. It's biology is weird, and it's not my um, <laughs> definitely not my uh, strong suit, uh, nor is it much of my focus. Um, so that's about as far as I kind of get into things there. So it's uh, so telescopes of sixteen inches or greater aperture. Uh, we are using an eight-inch telescope at the moment. May reveal slight color and brightness variations in the interior. There are two lovely bluish green rings surrounding a slightly darker center resembling the CBS for those of you who are in North America and we're familiar with that television station it resembles the CBS eye uh, a 13th magnitude star lies beyond the east edge so through a much if you to use a longer focal length it would be um, Yeah, we get a little more resolution. This is a tiny, tiny target. So, but again, it's one of those things that I don't, uh, I don't always image these kind of, um, I guess these these fringe targets that not a lot of people, you know, the, the big beautiful targets are what a lot of people go after. So, I try to pick up some different targets, and maybe they turn out good, and maybe they don't. But that's, uh, you know, if I if I'm not sure about the target, I'm still gonna, be, I'm still gonna go for it. It may. Not be a uh, target, but you know we'll see how, how the night goes. In terms of narrow band filters, do they just isolate the colors you're after, so you only get the needed color? Um, in a way, it is the uh, the wavelength of the visible spectrum is what uh, we're kind of, well, we're literally narrowing down to uh, to catch those. If you are imaging galaxies, it is better to use a broadband filter. Um, for your for your kind of your main image of the galaxy, it's uh, you're gonna get more detail of it. I think on my uh, I do have on my Instagram page, which is Astro Canuck. I do have a, a, a comparison of the Triangulum Galaxy, where you can see much you can see much more of the stars in the galaxy with a broadband filter. But when you're using this kind of narrowband filter, you do see the those red nebulae much more uh, pronounced in the image there so yeah for shooting um, yeah nebulae because hydrogen um, gas is um, going to be the most abundant in the universe and that is what a lot of the nebulae are comprised of uh, and then with some of the other elements as well that are going to be picked up um, but yeah you're going to pick that you're going to get that red signal coming through um, which the uh, if you're using a color camera, uh, unfortunately, you're only getting you know a quarter of that information out of each um, each area. I'm going to keep talking because we are going to come back. It is going to refresh, and I am going to give Virgin Media an earful because this is not the way I like to do things, and yeah. Just kind of keep on rambling and we'll be back. There we go. Um, where was I? Just talking about hydrogen alpha. Um, yeah, so it, I will try and find a, we'll, we'll find a target tonight that is uh, rich in hydrogen alpha and we will, uh, we'll see how much, you, I don't really have an example of how poorly it shows up with a broadband filter, but um, yeah, you're going to, it's going to be the reds that are going to come through the most. In this, so uh, let's see where we are because if we're close to a, because I am on the other side of the meridian at the moment, so let's see if there's some other targets that are available that are rich in hydrogen alpha. Let's see. Right. Let me 
go for see if we can get the bubble nebula because that's a a nice amount of information there. Seven six three five. So the bubble nebula, we've imaged a bubble nebula before, but it has been a while, and it is uh, an interesting looking target. And actually, I think the last time I did image it, we had um, some moderately breezy wind, so it wasn't uh, the most uh, steady target at the time. So let me just see, let's make sure that the scope isn't going to go crazy. Not too far from it, so should be should be happy. All right, looks like we are you're fairly good on there. So let me. So when you uh, yeah plate solving with the ASI Air is uh, actually here. Let me. Uh, <laughs> Let me go back to the, to the air. So you can see what I'm doing here. So yeah, plate solving is a great thing there because it, uh, it just helps you frame up your target that much better. And um, it also keeps the, the scope in the uh, In the know, I guess, as it were, to. Uh, I don't know if you heard that, but it sounds like there is some street racing going on <laughs> out along my street. Uh, yeah, the. Um, when you do the plate solving, it just helps the scope know exactly where it is, and it, going to the next target isn't that much of a, uh, a challenge because it knows where we are. Uh, cut it only for about two seconds. Their play these might be a good target to hit before the moon. That's true. Let's do the bubble nebula, and then we'll uh, maybe flip back to the uh, to the east. Because right now, with the uh, security camera, we don't see it popping up above the roof line yet. So let's hit our guiding on there. And we'll start... start imaging the bubble nebula. Maybe a little ahead of time, it's still settling them out. Uh, we need to process this data by stretching in Photoshop, etc. I will, with these ones, because I am doing um, just 10 minute images and the, uh, that, that's it for these ones. I really, I really just do a bit of a histogram stretch and we kind of just, you know, we'll save the images and that's kind of it for the target. Um, there's not a whole lot of processing that's going on with these. I am going to try to get these kind of posted up. I know a lot of things that's setting up a Discord server um, and just having these available as these single exposure images for, for you guys to just kind of play around with and see what kind of, um, how well you can get things sorted out there. ATS247, how are you doing? Thank you very much for joining the, the observatory. We are happy to have you join us. We're imaging, we're taking live images of outer space tonight, and we are currently on the bubble nebula, and that will be ready in about nine minutes. So thank you very much. Stick around and uh, see some images of space. Yeah, for these uh, images, yeah, it's just, uh, histogram stretch and that's about it for for this and uh, very cool yes thank you yeah it's uh, it's, it's fun this is what I enjoy doing um, it's kind of my contribution to astronomy and uh, astrophotography and just kind of sharing my experience with as many of you as possible and 
yeah, when this image comes through, this will be one of the um, a little more of a satisfying target rather than the um, the uh, the plant the blue uh, snowball nebula comes through there. Astro Beard, how are you doing? Thank you very much for joining the observatory. Thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate that so much. How have you been? Life is good. Cool. Excellent. It is, uh, it is pretty well over here, too, because we are dealing with the clearest skies we've had in weeks here in the UK. So, yeah, happy to, uh, to have this rolling. And, uh, yeah, it's been way too long before we've had some consistent nights for this. So I'm very happy to, to be doing this and yeah, just very happy to be sharing this with you guys and happy that you guys have come in because it's, um, it's always nice to just have some conversation pop up out of nowhere and you just, you see where, where the night goes. Um, where in, where are you in the UK? I'm in the east of England, uh, east of, east Essex area. So we're, um, yeah, it's not too, the, we kind of don't always get the full brunt of the um, of the Atlantic weather kind of coming through there. So it's a, we leave that to like um, you know, Northern Ireland and Plymouth and, and Wales and all, all those areas, they can have that bad weather. Although when the weather comes from the north, we're pooched. We, um, yeah, we, we get hammered with that and it's just unfortunate to... Uh, to deal with that weather, but at least when it's when a lot of the weather is coming from the west, I have a clear view from the the second floor of the house to be able to see that we have some clear skies that are going to maintain for uh, for a few hours at least. Um, yeah, it's uh, full mine, full mine. I, how do you pronounce it? Because <laughs> I think I'm saying it one way and. Uh, Putsy has says that has said it another way. Fulmine. Fulmine. All right. Cool. Stick with that. I am good. I am good. Thank you very much for stopping by. We are looking at the bubble nebula at the moment. Well, we are. We have a, a quick five second exposure of the bubble nebula, but we will be having a full image come through in about five minutes. So. That is the uh, the area we're looking at. So let me jump over to Stellarium, just kind of give you guys an idea of what we're doing. Uh, I'm currently in London, I'm about to move to St Albans. I love St Albans. I love St Albans, and I'm crushed that I can't go there right now. Um, we always uh, we stopped at the at the Waffle House whenever we go that way. Um, so I can get some better sky without too much light pollution. Yeah, you'll as soon as you get out of the city. You're gonna, you can notice a, a marked improvement on the night sky there. Um, yeah, mildly uh, jealous of St. Albans. <laughs> um, yeah, love going there uh, as often as possible. And mainly for the Waffle House. Right, uh, before we got onto waffles. Have you got any more plans after M45 tonight? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm probably, I'm gonna go, we'll be, uh, it is quarter after nine right now, and I'll probably at least do another three hours. Uh, we'll just kind of see where we go from there. I'll show you where, what, what area of the night sky uh, have available because um, it is it can be limited. So let's go to to now. Actually, I, I will speed up the clock to daytime. I pass daytime too quick. Right, so when I am looking at my back garden, I am 
block. See this? There's that would be where the uh, where the scope is. You see that the arm mount. Um, I'm blocked by the two trees in the back garden and the neighbor's house. Um, two out of three of those objects I could knock down without uh, an, a problem. The third object being my neighbor's house. They protest every time I'm asking them to knock their house down so I can get a better view to the south. Um, but the, the trees stay where they are, uh, lest I feel the wrath of Mrs. Canuck. And to the north, I can, I got a, a the Polaris is just above the, the roof line there. Um, Astro Beard, when we used to say someone was tough, we say they were tougher than a steak at the Waffle House. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, uh, yeah, it's in all this cute little town. Didn't know about the Waffle House. Where is it? Um, offhand, I don't remember the street. Google will be able to tell you. And yet, yeah, um, haven't had the steak, any steak from the Waffle House, but um, tried a bunch of the different flavors of, uh, of waffles and toppings. And as far as I know, you got to get there early. I believe it's called the Waffle Unless I just was calling it their Waffle House because of dead like me, but I think if you, if you, if you Google Waffle House St. Albans, it should take you there. It's a tiny little place, and as far as I know, you got to get there early on the, on the weekends. But, you know, with lockdowns, I don't know how well that's going to go at the moment, so we'll see there. Um, Fulminate, how do you know where it is? How do I know where what is? Sorry, I've, I've missed the chat as I was waxing about uh, my poor views on there. I see me on Putsy's channel. <laughs> hey, Putsy. <laughs> right. Uh... <laughs> Let's see there. Ethan Jogola, hello, how are you? Sorry, I missed you uh, when you popped in there. Thanks for stopping on by. Uh, how do you put your own images into, in, like that, in Stellarium? It is it, a, the, the simple uh, description of it is that you basically, you take a 360 panorama of your garden, you kind of pick a certain point. Uh, obviously, I haven't stitched it up as well because it was really a quick job where I wanted to kind of get this in there but you uh, you kind of remove your background as best as possible and there are some procedures with uh, just plunking your image there you choose the there's a certain height that you pick I got this from this tutorial off of uh, I believe it was Sean Nielsen from Visible Dark on, uh, on YouTube um, he is a Canadian astrophotographer and he does some tremendous work and some great tutorials on PixInsight. But it was one of his tutorials about, uh, about throwing your own image within um, in Stellarium so you can get a better idea of where you are able to, to image for the night. So yeah, I have these, these trees are the bane of my astrophotography existence. So like I said, I have views to the east and you know, straight up towards the zenith and northeast and a little bit to the north where Polaris would be. So we jump back to now and there being there's the, the north star. So yeah, I have uh, quite a bit available. The moon should be coming up fairly shortly there. Um, and yeah, that's uh, those are the areas, so once the moon kind of clears off, I'll be aiming towards, um, let's see, shooting please, my, well, that'll be the next target right after the, uh, the bubble nebula, we'll, we'll jump over there before, although I can already see that gradient growing in the, uh, in the camera there. Where are you from? Where am I from? From... I'm in the UK, I'm in East Essex area. Uh, oh, that, 
link doesn't isn't complete there. Putsy, sorry, I'm like way behind on the on the chat here. I've been yammering on too long here. Sorry, guys. Putsy, how are you? Thank you very much for your stopping in. Thank you very much for uh, featuring me on your on your uh, on your stream again. I appreciate it so much, man. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Putsy, he is a hilarious and interesting streamer from Singapore. He plays all sorts of games, has some cool features on his uh, on his stream that utilizes the coins a little better, uh, utilize the channel points a little better than I do right now. Uh, at the moment, with ours, you can highlight your message. But hey, we're getting there. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get some other options coming up soon, because we had just... Uh, earlier in uh, later in a few days like was it four or five four days ago or so we had reached the level of affiliate with twitch so it is uh, a, a bit of a, a new uh, a new adventure for for all of this so it's um, yeah kind of kind of catching up with things there's a lot to uh, to process with all this uh, next level of streaming so I will. We'll get there eventually, for sure. Uh, I ended up. You, Arish, I ended up chopping trees down for just a good view. Yeah, I like I said. I, I would cut these down. However, there is uh, a smaller person who is feisty, and she would kill me if I cut these trees down. So, I will. Uh, I'll play nice, mm -hmm. and I will stick with the. Uh, my view to the east there. Uh, yeah, Putsy getting one of the uh, the first badges, and also the the subscriber badges will change up. It won't be just stars. We'll get some uh, some more. Well, it could be. It still could be a star, but maybe not. You know, your your five pointed stars. Um, maybe I'll do that. I'll feature some stars, some interesting looking stars in there, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, Google links failing. <laughs> Shush, Google. I'm not talking to you. Uh, Waffle House and Albans. Yeah, that should be it there. An error occurred. Okay, if you're searching Waffle House, it should be the... Uh, On St. Michael's Street. I was going to say Michael's. Uh, yeah, St. Michael's Street, St. Albans. That's the one. You're kind of like right near a creek and everything like that. It's a beautiful little place. So if that's where you're looking, then that's that's where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Ethan, cool. Now I have something to do today. Yes, it's uh, an interesting thing to do with Stellarium. And like I said, you, you, you kind of got to... There isn't a, an exact... The hardest thing I think is going to be positioning because you have a 360 view and it's positioning your image so you're oriented correctly. I think I had my image placed once. I picked a random number between 1 and 360 and I landed pretty much where I am right now and I didn't touch it at all. So I also have to adjust my elevation in the, the image as well because yeah, things aren't looking um, exactly where they, uh, where they should be there. Reach, have uh, ever done wide field astro? Yes, I do. I have a smaller um, Skywatcher 72 ED refractor, and uh, with a 0.6 reducer, I get about a 250 millimeter um, view on there. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's about as wide as I've gone since I've moved away from the uh, Star Adventure, where I would have my 70. Uh, 70 to 300 millimeter lens on the uh, on my DSLR, which is now my uh, broadcast camera. It's uh, semi-retired, so that's uh, that's what I do. But yeah, uh, on my Instagram page is where and is where I share most of my astro photos, all my process stuff, um, mm -hmm. and that is Astro Canuck, and I, yeah. Um, there's a, 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 a definite progression of my uh, of how things have gone with uh, astrophotography on there. 
go in there with the lockdown lifts. Yes, definitely. That's uh, that's one of those restaurants that uh, you, you almost don't realize you miss it until all of a sudden you just can't go there. Um, how hard is it to do these things? It's um, I don't know. It's uh, how long is a piece of string? It really kind of comes down to what you uh, what your goals are going to be. I mean, if you go if you have like your your mobile phone, that's a nice wide enough view that if you have a, a bit of a if you have a self timer on there and set it for like five seconds, you're able to prop it up, or even if you have your phone on a tripod, you can get again depending on the modes of your camera, you can probably get about a thirty second exposure of the night sky, which is going to look fairly decent on the a mobile phone um, for how the technology has progressed. But even if you have a, um, a DSLR on a tripod and you have a wide field of view, you can still get maybe about a, a 20, 30 second exposure on there and start to get some details with the Milky Way, uh, depending on your area there. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, some people will claim it's, it's hard and some others find it that it almost comes naturally. Uh, I came from a graphic design and photography background so I was already familiar with how um, you know to, to use the settings right off the bat so it uh, I guess the, the learning curve for me was in the, the processing end of things and just uh, experimenting with um, different processes of um, do you have a photo of a universe uh, oh, you see, uh, me and a, sorry, I'm jumping messages there, uh, like a galaxy. Uh, we can, sh we can image a galaxy shortly. Um, we'll, uh, we'll go to a star cluster in a bit, and then, uh, yeah, we can go to, I think the, uh, the triangulum galaxy shows up really nice in here. Um, I can go, uh, Andromeda doesn't fit in this view. So Andromeda is our closest na galactic neighbor, uh, and it is, act it is about six full moons uh, across, so it doesn't fit in this uh, the sensor that I have on the camera right now. But uh, the triangulum fits nice in there, and it is uh, a cool one to look at as well. Uh, some very nice photos on there. Oh, cool! You checked out the Instagram. Thank you. Um, appreciate that. Um, yeah, just love to to share the images. And like I said, sometimes they turn out great, sometimes they don't. And it's uh, it it kind of comes down to um, a few factors. It could be not as much integration time on an image because if there's some people who you know you'll take maybe a an hour of a, of a target and that's just not enough time to improve your signal to noise ratio and it uh, doesn't look the best but however you're trying and like anybody who's posted like their first astro photo i love it because you're only going to go up from there and you're going to want to learn more and it's just going to kind of be you and it's okay if you look back at your old image and you're like that's garbage and that's fine you know because at least if you can be critical of your old images, and then you know you're you're, you're learning about uh, new processes and just talking to other people, you get a different idea. Like, I still, you know, I'm, I still look at uh, tons of different tutorials online and just trying to pick out new new techniques, um, you know, just uh, new ways to just kind of bring out the most in your astro photos. So, yeah, it's a it's a never ending process there. So, it's. Uh, yeah, just gotta stay, just um, yeah, just stay on it as much as possible. Um, see, uh, ATS. I'm a newbie in this stuff, so I love watching people like you learn, like you learn. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will. The odd time, um, I do image processing uh, some nights. And that'll be like kind of my rainy day astronomy sessions, and I kind of I'll go through an image. It's not so much of a um, of a tutorial per se, but it's just uh, getting an idea of my process for trying to get an image uh, that comes together as quickly as well, I say as quickly as possible. Last Saturday, I tried to do an image that I was going to say was only going to take about an hour, and three and a half hours later, just from the random kind of conversation that popped up that we just kind of went off on tangents um, kind of came up with an image that was all right <laughs> um, still definitely some work that would need to be done on it there uh, I'm just noticing on 
I've also um, been trying to edit my channel a bit and it's you know it, it was kind of th this whole design was like my first idea for uh, for trying to get some kind of um, image to pop up there so um, yeah I'm just I'm, I'm still tweaking and um, yeah I'm still trying to, to make it my own because some of these um, graphics are just some stock options that were there um, like I am a graphic designer so I am working on little little things here and there to um, to make it my own to make it a lot more Astro Canuck like uh, is there any type uh, focal length that's one size fits all I know you mentioned about telescopes being upwards of two meters for deep space um, no it's yeah it, it's gonna depend on your target there I mean um, uh, what you're gonna image I started off with a, uh, a uh, like the, the kit lens that was on here at uh, 55 millimeters and you know I wasn't um, I can get a wide field but you also uh, you can get a wide field and it's great to see a lot of the, the stars and some of the, the clusters out there but you don't get a lot of detail in there so um, what I have right now for my setup I have a wide field scope at, uh, using a reducer is about 250 millimeters and then this scope which is at 980 millimeters and that's with a reducer on that as well so it's native focal length on this one is 1600 millimeters so it's just having that uh, those uh, the in-between options there to uh, depending on what the what targets I'm going to be shooting and because this, this is a, a, a new scope to me so I'm using as much as possible using it as much as possible on some targets that may not require such a deep field image but there are some interesting parts of it that uh, once you resolve the image at such a higher focal length that they were kind of to me unseen in older images there so I think um, the Pac-Man Nebula is uh, one that has really um, been a bit of an eye-opener because I have shot that at a few different focal lengths now and um, at uh, shooting at this one it was amazing to see some of those really intricate and tiny details within the nebula itself and speaking of nebulas we've been on <laughs> on all this for a while and this this is also what happens sometimes when just things get going I'm happy with that and uh, unfortunately it also means I'm not showing you guys real pictures of outer space I'm uh, kind of defeating the the purpose of things here however if you are also for some reason happy to have me ramble on that's you know that's cool but you know also remind me in the chat saying where's our stars you know let, let me know <laughs> um so here let's uh check out the image the image coming up of the bubble nebula is just right out of the camera i've done absolutely no processing to it at all so this is our shot of that area of the sky. Just bring that up there. And yeah, this one's turned out way better than previous images because the guiding is nice and spot on. It's a clear night. We don't have any clouds rolling through. So yeah, again, this is uh, the camera that I'm using is a astronomy dedicated camera. It has a cooled sensor, so I am able to get rid of a lot of thermal noise that you would usually build up in a DSLR camera. So you don't have like all this uh, the, the blue and red kind of blotches that you see in uh, like your night, like any night images or a darker image. So it just kind of gets rid of that noise, and you're just getting the signal coming from space. So yeah, um, yeah, the focal length, it, it really depends on your target there. So um, if you are doing a lot more, depending on what you're going to do, it's almost having a two scope set up is, uh, is a good option there. Um, whereas if you're using a, a camera lens that will adjust from like, you know, 70 to 300 millimeters, the problem with that is you're, you're, you're sacrificing a lot of resolution because you're shooting through so many different elements of glass in the camera lens, where in um, 
telescopes aren't going to have many more than you know, three or four elements to before it gets to your your, uh, your camera sensor or your eye, depending on what uh, your choice is there. Um, kind of like your overlay. Well, cool. If you kind of like it, then I hope then the next one you're really going to like, which I have no idea what it's going to be, but hey, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll go from there. Um, see Orion and the friends in the bottom of the screen. Yes, it's uh, Orion is starting to peak up above the roof line. And at about um, probably closer to midnight, we're going to start seeing some of the some more parts of the Orion constellation being available. And I think in about maybe another three weeks, I'm going to have um, the majority of Orion above the roof line, and we'll be able to get some shots of the Orion Nebula, uh, Horsehead Nebula, and uh, the Rosette Nebula, which is. I have a shot of that that I only had an hour. I only got an hour of the Rosette Nebula last season. And for me, that's kind of almost all I needed uh, at the time. Because it turned out to be such a, a, a cool image in the end. And um, But I definitely need to go back and give that the, the proper uh, attention that it needs, for sure. So let me throw some information. Actually, let me, uh, I'm going to do a histogram stretch of uh of the nebula here and i see there are some more chat messages i'm going to come back to that in just two seconds otherwise we're going to be sitting on the bubble nebula for um forever so let's try and bring out some more detail in there and it is just i'm just doing the histogram stretch on the uh on the image here I mean, it's just one of those really cool looking, like I, to me, I see a face in this right now, like almost like a, like a, a wrapped mummy head or something there, you know, the, those two main stars, uh, that kind of gaping maw at the bottom there, but that's, uh, that's just me. Yeah, there's, uh, it's only so far you can kind of push this image before. Um, you really start to, uh, you know, like, sorry. like you can start to see a lot of the, the, the speckling and the blotches and that comes from the, the noise that you, for just one image that we're taking, you are kind of um, amplifying all this. So if you're doing, when you're doing astrophotography, you do have, you're stacking the images, so you are eliminating a lot more of this noise, so you have a nice buttery smooth. Um, background overall but uh, yeah the, the point of, of these images is to get enough of a of an image together to to be able to share something that looks pretty freaking cool <laughs> so let me read up some uh, information on the bubble and I'd be like here a couple of paragraphs on it and I'm just using it for a lot of this um, a lot of these targets I don't know the information cold so I am um, th those that I do you're, you're gonna hear which ones I am more familiar with and which ones I am uh, kind of re just regurgitating the information on there so it was discovered in 1787 by Friedrich Wilhelm Herschel uh, with an 8 inch telescope we're using an 8 inch telescope uh, the nebula is visible as an extremely faint and large shell around a magnitude 8.7 um, star, a, the nearby 7th magnitude star on the west hinders observation, but one can view the nebula using averted vision, more of that averted vision, just looking off to the, to the left or to the right. Using a 16 to 18 inch telescope, one can see that the faint nebula is irregular and elongated in the north-south direction. NGC 7635 is about 11,000 light years away. So this image that we're seeing happened we're seeing it as it was 11,000 years ago um, because the speed of light, as fast as it seems, is really slow in an astronomical term. Um, the bubble itself, which is that, that, that mummy head right in the middle, clearly visible bubble, is about 10 light years across. So even if you're traveling at the speed of light, there's a 299 million meters per second, a thousand meters per second. Um, 
it would take you so it'll take you um, actually a light year how far do you travel in a light year oh god mathematics uh, those are numbers I still haven't memorized um, it was created by a fierce stellar wind from the hot young massive central star which has blasted out the structure of glowing gas against the denser material in a surrounding molecular cloud. The nebula is being energized by the hot central star, causing it to glow. The central star is thought to have a mass of 10 to 20 solar masses. So that sun, or that star, you know, is uh, you know, 10 to 20 times the mass of our sun. So the, uh, our sun is a nice main sequence star that is pleasant to... Um, to live around and it's not shooting off any uh, extra things there um, so I'm about to drop um, quite a bit of money on some kit getting the same amount so get the same amount as yours Skywatcher 80 ED uh, Altair cam but not sure which one to get I uh, mainly fond of focus on nebulae and not much planetary stuff yeah I am um, I like planets however it is just it it's not the type of imaging that I, that I like to uh, to do on there. Um, yeah, I mean the eighty ED is a great uh, a great refractor to use. Um, I've seen a lot of people get some great results from that there. Um, as far as the Altair cam, I'm not familiar with using their kit. However, uh, a lot of the sensors do kind of. Um, uh, are fairly are kind of similar across the across the board there but um, yeah I think uh, for checking out Altair cams if you check out uh, Astro Stace uh, Stacy Downton on uh, YouTube uh, and even on her Instagram channel she uses a lot of the Altair um, cameras and she's a wealth of information for those things to uh, to kind of maybe narrow your search down for exactly which camera you want to get there. Um, yeah, I know they've just come out with a, Altair has just released a new camera, which uh, looks pretty impressive. I think it is 16 bits, so you're going to get a nice um, gradient there, or nice, um, nice levels of gray in that. Way. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, so there you go. The bubble that we're looking at right now there. Uh, I love this. It was one of those targets that I haven't actually really been able to uh, to capture until this season. So very happy to uh, to be getting that there. Um, sorry, just getting to the highlighted messages now. Uh, I can do with a quick tour on histogram. So I just use the I just use Cyril when stretching, so it does the uh, the auto stretch for me. So yeah, this um, the images on here they do like if I reset the histogram. That's all we see. You know, it's uh, a very uh, uneventful looking image there. However, overall, without the stretch, I mean, you can see just how smooth that uh, you know, the image is with the cooled camera. So you're not amplifying any of those issues there. If we do the auto stretch, You know, we get this point, which isn't going to push things too far. You're going to get a, a better image out of there. But I do like to push the image just a little farther um, when you are when when we're doing things like this. Like so, when you're doing and you're stretching, at least you know for your for your dark for the left side of your levels, you want to bring your slider just up until where you start to see your. Uh, I don't know how serial how their thing looks, but it's. Um, with Photoshop, you kind of have that nothing, nothing, and then the big spike of where your main data is. So as long as you bring that slider just before all your where your data is showing up, you're not going to be clipping in, in, in any information off of there. Uh, so that's kind of a point where you start, like where the where the white level is on this. It's already clipping parts of the uh, of the image here. So we are losing data at the expense of uh, of highlighting some of the images there. So yeah, for uh, for these images that we that we take part in, that we that we look at, I do stretch them beyond what is uh, kind of reasonable, but we do we do see some uh, some details kind of coming through there. 
I think that's always the cool thing about astronomy. You're looking back in time like you are time traveling. Yeah, and I do wonder how, you know, if we could theoretically travel to an object faster than the speed of light. So let's say we we're going towards uh, towards the bubble nebula. You know, that, that was 11,000 years ago when this started, uh, when this event occurred. Um, I think that, you know, with the, uh, with the Crab Nebula, that uh, what we're seeing now was a thousand years ago when, when, when the star exploded, um, when it was witnessed in 1054, but how much that nebula has grown in a thousand years. But if you were, to, I guess, if you were to travel you know, faster than the speed of light towards an object, would we see it actually changing in almost real time? You know, in the sense that I think you know, traveling that fast, you really wouldn't be able to make sense of things, but these are the weird little theoretical things that kind of pop into my head um, or kind of sitting out, sitting outside or even doing, uh, just getting some images uh, processed there. Um, so Stacy has become uh, my friend through this, so I'll hit her up. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, she's, uh, yeah, she's got some really good videos and uh, actually I, got, I saw when she first started doing her YouTube videos and just seeing how much she's progressed with astrophotography. And um, yeah, just amazing, amazing work that she's done. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a fan of hers. Third Rock Astronomy, how are you doing tonight? The Imbalance Yin Yang Nebula, that's true. That yeah, is. However, it's again one of those things that uh, I do want to give it a fair shake and, uh, and get some imaging. However, it is uh, it's position is uh, not favorable for me at the moment so let's uh let's take a look at what i think i can see the moon popping up there so we'll uh, we're going to be battling that for a bit yeah you can just just up above uh just up above you can see that kind of coming up there and even the the bit of the rim light on the uh, on the telescope there. No, Cassie, it's not. Uh, we're uh, everything to the east is going to be kind of blurred out by the moon, so I'm going to try to shoot pretty much straight up as much as possible, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'm also going to turn it to the moon because I've actually never shot the, the moon with this camera scope combination yet. So I think that'll be. Um, That'd be kind of cool to see. So let's kind of let's jump back to did I get a chance? I have not. I have not had a chance to check out your four-hour shot. Um, I apologize on that. Was that, uh, did you whisper that one over or, God, I feel like a bit of a heel. All right, let's, uh, actually what's in the area? What else can we pick out while we're in this, uh, on this side of the, of the meridian? Let's uh, save that image there for for later. And oh, we're, uh, let's there we go. Uh, also, this is going to be a test. Now that for some reason I have uh, Stellarian up, I did get uh, Cart do soul seal cart to seal um, so I'm gonna get that uh, installed probably tomorrow and see how that uh, performs on the stream here if it doesn't uh, make things chug along or not so the bubble nebula so I could now Let's go over to let's check out NG 
me see. Right, so yeah, like I said, we're gonna be uh, fighting with the moon at the moment. I think we'll, uh, we'll see if we can have a quick look at the Wizard Nebula before we kind of pop back over to the... No, we said we're going to look at, try and catch the Pleiades, one of the stars in there. We'll just, uh, we'll put the, put the filter and everything to the test and just see how well it, uh, it goes there, so, uh, 45. And we'll just see where it actually centers on this cluster. change where my head is, if I move myself over to the, over that way, it'll look like I'm looking at the telescope at least. You know, let's try to make it look reasonable there. target. Alright, yeah, cool looking at that uh, the bubble nebula they sent over there. Yeah, that works great as a wide field image as well because there's so much in that area to uh, to catch. So what guide scope cam setup are you using tonight? I am using the, my camera, my main imaging camera is the ZWO ASI 533. And the guide cam is the ZWO 120mm mini. The guide scope is the Skywatcher 50 ED Evo Star. The telescope is an Altair Astro mm -hmm. uh, Eight inch Richie Kretchen design scope and the mount is a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. I will also get some commands as well to share those specs at a moment's notice as well because I will keep a regular kind of setup of the uh, of the scope because it, a it's a this is the largest telescope that I've actually used and it is a little uh, cumbersome to um, to kind of get set up there. Alright, so we are on a part of the Pleiades. So do you have to run EQ mod or does it or the ASI air handle at all? The ASI air handles everything. And I'm very happy with the uh, with this uh, little computer, because it has made my life so much easier for astrophotography. Um, you know, all the controls are uh, are available on here. It's just because the, the model of the EQ6R Pro I have is one with that has the um, um, the USB output on there. So, uh, so I'm not going through the hand controller. So the hand controller is wrapped up in bubble wrap in the in the box right now so I used the hand controller for a short while um, and yeah it's uh, it's been absolutely fantastic I can't I there's way more good things to say about it than bad uh, I looked at the ASA Air over a year ago when they were brand new and had some issues so I stayed away yet I, I was also going on about how 
things got really bad for a lot of people with the ASA Air during uh, one of the updates that had some that had some significant bugs in it, where you could not do a Meridian flip to save your life. You sometimes couldn't even get the thing booted up; it would just uh, crash right away. Um, so it's it's had it, it, ha it has had its ups and downs, but it seems that they've had a they're, they're at a stable build with a lot of this, and it's just uh, a more enjoyable product to, to be using. Now we are, so I'm going to drop my exposure time as well. We're shooting into the moon. Um, yeah, it's just been a lot easier to use, like, um, so you do it the hard way, direct to all the PC. I, I did that as well. I was uh, using APT and PHD. And uh, APT is Astro, for those not familiar, is Astrophotography Tools. And uh, PhD is the guiding program. And it's, uh, it all comes down to really pushing one button, which is you know, push here, dummy. And it's, it's largely similar to almost like the interface that we're seeing um, with the ASI Air right now. However, there's, uh, there's just there's a few more steps that you can do where the ASI Air is very is largely kind of point and click so um, you know you pick your guide star and it's kind of relatively in that area where it's going to uh, you know it's got another start in that box and sometimes doesn't always want to play nice if the star moves too much then your guiding goes all wonky but by and large, I've had very little problems with guiding. Like when I was using PhD2, I was, I spent a night and a half trying to get it to work. I didn't know for the life of me why things weren't working, uh, but it's like the first night on using the ASI Air, I was up and running uh, very quickly. Like to the point where it's like, I, I thought something might have, what's gonna go wrong? Cause you know, when everything goes right, when you're setting up and you start imaging so soon, you're thinking, what? have I missed you know it's just uh, one of those things uh, Lasmandy's Gemini driver had the same issue with Meridian flip uh, something to do with hard stop limits there were some people who actually had their their mount just continued to rotate right around until the cords basically either snapped or unplugged someone had a big problem with that and it was just it's heartbreaking and I, I don't know who it was I just saw recently um, I was looking on Instagram, I'm not going to find the post. Oh, there we go. Um, it was from Astro Heart UK on, uh, on Instagram. Showed a picture of his mount had tipped over in the wind. And it is toast. The, his telescope is cracked as well. The, uh, the tube is uh, there's a big crack in it. The mount just is smashed and just heartbreaking to see that happen. Yeah, I just saw it just before um, just before I jumped on. So it's it's tough seeing when when people's uh, equipment gets uh, gets damaged by you know, by natural means, unfortunately. Um, yeah, love hate with uh, with PhD. Yeah, I I was largely on the hate end of things. Once it got going, I was happy with it, but it was just way too long um, to get to get started on there. And even trying to find um, some guides, it was it, it's one of those things where people are also taking so long. Some people are taking so long. I've <laughs> we've done like what two images tonight. Um, just kind of going on about the different things there, but yeah, just people took so long to get to the point. And I had like maybe one specific problem, and trying to wade through all the YouTube videos was kind of tough to uh, I eventually kind of worked my way around and found the answer to, to life me. I don't remember what it was now because I was now it was two seasons ago when, uh, when I was able to get that going but that was also the same night when I shot Andromeda for the first time and that was uh, rather magical all right I'm I have to see which star we're kind of focused on here but uh, we're gonna roll out a let's do five minutes on here because these stars are gonna be pretty pretty bright. 
we'll see how this uh, how this goes and I'm going to be whimsical and I'm going to drop the temperature down another five degrees as well because oh, that's too far so I'm going to do minus 15 Let's see how that looks um, yeah I think it's time to get an insurance policy on my rig uh, just my mount cost me 5k because my AVX wasn't cutting it for the payload payload weight uh, yeah it's uh, yeah one of those things where y you don't want anything to happen like I was the first time I had the scope left out when we had some high winds I propped that thing up so much with uh, other pieces of wood in there in, in the back garden it hasn't moved it doesn't it's it's heavy enough and I'm in a, an air a spot it's in a spot that doesn't really get rocked too much by the wind like a lot of the trees the, the, the one good thing that uh, they do for me is block out some of the wind rolling through the garden there so um, yeah, we had the, the one of the first heavy winds that were coming through when we had some thirty-six mile an hour sustained winds. Um, yeah, I was I was I was very I was always keeping an eye out and thinking in my head that's that scope shaking. I got to bring it in, but it held up. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate to always see someone's uh, equipment get damaged. Although I have seen a few people who say they have their mounts like on top of their roof. And at that point, it's like, well, you're almost, you're, you're, you're playing with fire there. It's, it's unfortunate that it happened. I know you got a great imaging spot. However, yeah, it's kind of tough to put it on such a, an open area. So, you know, you never know. You don't want anything to happen to the equipment. You want to take care of it as best as possible. Like, I, I've noticed a bit of rust forming on, um, like, one of the feet on the telescope. I'm just like, no. Oh unfortunate I don't like my equipment to get uh, all you know ugly but at the same time I'm up in imaging in like 20 minutes so you know take the good with the bad there um, I'm not shooting images of my telescope of the, the mount's legs we are we are shooting part of the Pleiades at the moment let me find out which star this is and uh, Told the wife when we were looking into mounts to upgrade, to upgrade to, we need to impose a nightly setup weight limit. Yes, I think what's uh, kind of saved me is that I do have a, a wide, a wide base on uh, the scope at the moment because I still have to try even with a pier, um, a pier extension. I still need a, a fair bit of height to uh, to get up to see above the roof line, or to have a decent view above the roof line there so I can once objects are about 36 degrees above the horizon they are fair game above that uh, that roof that we see just uh, right there that's my that's my lowest uh, altitude where I'm going to start imaging right I was going to see which star we are on there Yeah, we were almost shooting like right into the into the moon. It looks like uh where's the top of the sensor? I want to say no, not LCI. Possibly, kind of the three or the four left stars, which I have. Sterop, Asterop. Tegeta Maya, uh, the pronunciations are probably butchering them, but that looks like the uh, possibly where we're at. Maybe not. Might be zoomed in too much. No, different area. I 
haven't I don't really image the Pleiades that much because I've just never had the uh, the views at the moment so yeah, yeah exposure is done uh, 25 kilos was the weight limit we agreed on that's why we went with the Lasmandi G811G uh, with the HD tripod and 12 inch pier because the max payload is 25 uh, so the range of scopes I can run are uh, man manageable enough to set up and break down, basically anything C11 or smaller. Yeah, I think this was uh, definitely with this scope at the for the the price point and everything. What my budget has been, yeah, this is my maximum limit, and this is kind of the setup that is also leave it out there. Um, I was for the most part before I start before I got my uh, my scope cover, I was using. Um, with my the 72 ed i was taking i was you know, tearing down and bringing it in uh, the same night which was uh, getting frustrating so it was time to invest in a scope cover so i was actually able to enjoy uh, things more because you know you get that especially when it, now it's uh, you know it's dark at about 5 30 and we have re reach astro dark at about quarter after six so yeah you know work finishes and I have like, you know, this, this short time to, to bring everything out and set up and try to eat dinner and, you know, it's, uh, it becomes a little too hectic, unfortunately. So yeah, let's uh, do a little stretch on this and try and see if there's some details that we can see in there. Now we did shoot an area of, uh, of the Pleiades the other night, which was uh, Marope, Marope. Uh, and you can see some of that structure of the uh, the clouds. And you can start to see it uh, a little bit wispy up at the top there. Wow. I need to know where we're at. Okay, here we go. Right. So that is the bottom star is Alcyone, and the right is Merope, which we did image the other night, and Maya is on the top left corner. That's it. I now I got now I got it. So yeah, it, it focuses like right on the center of the cluster there. So yeah, I could uh, if I combine the other image from the other night, I have a tiny little uh, little mosaic. Also, again, before I was never a fan of diffraction spikes, but I really like how these look in coming out in this. And you know, using a, a narrow band filter, it's not the, the the best to be looking at the at the Pleiades because you're um, you're not getting the full spectrum, and you don't get that. Uh, you know, there'd be a lot more um, of the uh, that kind of nebulous area, the dust that's illum uh, that's being illuminated. Um, would be more visible with the broadband filter. So, like I said before, that is the kind of the next filter purchase that I'm looking to to add on there, and that kind of will fit in with the the next step after the dew heaters is to do a uh, a filter wheel uh, combo. So at least we can, if we're shooting multiple targets that are better for broadband or narrowband, at least we can uh, have a look at those images there. So let's. Uh, a little closer for you guys but that is part of the Pleiades and open star cluster and uh, it's, a, it's a much much larger um, area of the sky than we can fit into the sensor and this focal length as well this would work really well with the smaller scope um, with my 72 millimeter refractor and that would be uh, that would fill the whole frame rather nicely um, and it would they yeah, see a lot more of the uh, the whole structure of the, of the of the cluster around there. But I think even zooming in on this target as well, because you can see if I can maybe just really try to top this out and see some of those wispy clouds around there. Like I said, when yeah, you can start to see that. The, uh, the perpendicular wispy areas there but again it would come out a lot clearer with um, a broadband filter 
But at the same time, I'm happy with this. I'm always happy with all the images overall. And like I said, this, those diffraction spikes just add that extra bit of uh, sparkle to the uh, <laughs> the image there. Just kind of brings it a little, gives it a little life, I think, um, overall, rather than just the, uh, these, the points of light. Yeah, so we'll save that one down. So let's, the moon, well, let's uh, we'll plate solve this and we were going to see if it'll, uh, if we can check out the moon at the moment. Uh, actually, no, I said I was going to go for the triangulum because who had said that? We've mentioned about a galaxy on your show. Um, I think it was Fulmine wanted to see a galaxy on there, so I'm going to go over to I'm going to go over to the Triangulum Galaxy because that shows up really nice with uh, with this filter at least for a galaxy and then uh, then we'll go over to the moon and see how that uh, how that looks which is m33 and yeah, you can see the, the moon is just taking over at the moment there and I knew this was gonna uh, there's gonna be uh, a bit of a challenge but we'll uh, we'll see how this how this goes I mean I would almost ideally want to try just to shoot um, a single band you do want to do like hydrogen alpha maybe uh, although I don't have that specific filter to block out as much of the light pollution as possible um, So after I get my, so I'm just catching up on your messages there, Third Rock. After I get my 80 millimeter, I'm done for the year because the next scope I want is uh, is going to really hurt the pocket and bank. Uh, I want a stellar view, mm -hmm. SVX 152T, visual, photographic. So all said and done, including mono 25K US later. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, well, yeah, leave that for 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 the next for next year's budget. Um, yeah, right now I am uh, overall happy with the, uh, the scopes that I have. I think, if anything, my refractor would want I want to change that to possibly a Esprit one hundred or a one twenty or maybe even uh, an Explore Scientific uh, one twenty seven, and uh, you know kind of use that with combos of filters or sorry reducers, and I will be back. There we go. Lousy internet. Gotta get that fixed. I keep complaining about it. Thanks forever. Um, right. Uh, let's get the let's get this imaging going on the triangle. Pick a new guide star because that one is too dim. Actually, we're kind of out of the moonlight, so I can go back up to three seconds. Won't be too bad. So the star is at three seconds. Stop guiding. Refresh. Too bright. How about you? Not too bad. Pretty bright. Maybe drop it down to two seconds. Perfect. There we go. Back on guy. Alright, we are let's get the most out of this and go for ten minutes on the triangle and galaxy. For 
M51, I did shoot that earlier um, in the year. That was back in April, April, May. Um, I got quite a number of hours. Actually, that's uh, on the Twitter notification for tonight. That was the, uh, the image that I placed on there as the uh, kind of the feature. And yeah, I think I, I want to say it was probably, I was edging up to 20 some odd hours worth of exposures in there. And that was with my uh, five inch um, Celestron. So it was, uh, that's shooting at F12 as well on that. So I yeah, definitely need a lot of integration time on that one there. But again, with, uh, with this telescope and this camera, definitely do want to go back. There's some, there's a lot of targets um, from the spring that I do want to get back on and, uh, and try it out with just the, this more efficient system. Uh, so we remodeled outside, the outside office over the summer. And And I lost storage space, safe storage space for it. So we decided to sell it and someone tried someone a tried and true insane imaging setup to save imaging setup and go to for the SV SVX ADT with the three inch focuser. So now I can run full frame on it, as well as being able to go up in dark skies when it's allowed. Cool. Um, I've never shot it full for uh, with a full frame sensor, so that would be yeah, definitely interesting, great image that you can kind of get out of there as well, so you wouldn't have to uh, crop in as much as possible there. Mechanical keyboard adds a second letter. That's fine. I'll, uh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely, uh, like, you know, the... Uh, the, the sensor on the, the Canon camera is the, the largest one that I've, I've, uh, I've used. So even kind of coming down to the, um, the one inch sensor on the 533, I was, I was worried about how, you know, things were going to, how things were going to be looking. Um, but, you know, that, that, that square sensor just hasn't, it doesn't bug me at all. I was really worried about how, um, it was going to, um, like how I was going to deal with my images and really for the most part a lot of targets fit nicely in that square shape and it's um, you know for like a, a quick thing I would have to reframe things on Instagram but um, I've never tried a mosaic with it yet so it's uh, I also haven't got my spacing uh, quite right as well so that's again it's another thing that when there is some time I'll uh, you know, get that sorted out. I think I only have to kind of move in by uh, a millimeter or two. So it's just the, yeah, that, that trial and error. And it's one of those things I don't want to be, I don't want to be tinkering with that when, I'm, uh, when I could be doing more of this or you know, just having the clear skies after weeks of clouds rolling in. So yeah, it's just one of those things where you gotta, you gotta you choose that maintenance period uh, wisely, so you're not uh, missing out on a lot of uh, a lot of things there. So we are imaging the Triangulum Galaxy, which is part of our local group of galaxies, along with Andromeda, and our Milky Way galaxy will eventually merge together and smush into a larger galaxy. Um, that will be billions of years from now. So if you want to mark that in your Google calendars, that's cool. We'll, uh, we'll set a reminder. But yeah, we are, we'll be going over to the moon after this because it is, um, <laughs> you can see, there it is coming through. And it's going to be blocking mm -hmm. a fair portion of the sky that we would usually be imaging. So it's a, a little, a little tricky business of navigating the moon. So we're uh, yeah, we're just going to look at it for a bit. 
and yeah, just see how it looks through this uh, the scope and camera combination because I've never imaged the moon. Actually, I haven't really imaged the moon in a long time. It's been probably years now. Um, I do have a shot of the moon that I, I did that, that I love a lot. Um, and it's a bit of a mineral moon image there, so it's not just you kind of that like, monochrome looking moon you are um, bringing out the um, the titanium oxide and the, and the rust that's in the in the um, in the lunar regolith so it's a little more colorful than usual there and I, I didn't try it I didn't want to stretch things too much but uh, you know it was, it was one of those things that I was experimenting with the, uh, with the saturation levels and it turned out fairly nice uh, again one of those images kind of featured in the, on the Instagram channel there and I actually have uh, created posters which um, might be even available on our Etsy store which is let me see if I actually have that still up for sale because if it is I'll direct you guys over that way and maybe you want to bet no, uh, we'll see I don't know if it's still available at the moment should uh, I will what I'll do is I will post them up on Instagram again for anyone who may want a moon poster say for Christmas we'll see uh, not pushing them at all it's just a thing that I do as a uh, graphic designer and uh, a little bit of typography art in there so the whole reason I wanted Full frame is because when I go mono, then I might as well go full frame. Fair enough. Um, pretty paint, <laughs> paint it vanta black. That's it. Get to uh, have no light impacting any of this stuff as <laughs> possible. Uh, personally, one shot color versus DSLR on the moon. Uh, DSLR, I could never get the color right of the uh, 183 MC Pro. I never tried, and uh, again, this is my first uh, astronomy dedicated camera that I've used. Uh, for the most part, it's been it's been a, a, a pleasure to, to to get these images out of there. Um, these ones that come out of the RC8 are almost um, I'm shoot, at this point I'm at like f 4.7, and it, they almost come out a little darker. Uh, it takes a little more finesse to kind of bring up the levels without almost tearing it apart. So you gotta almost got to run a few levels and curves adjustments before I'm getting into um, seeing any uh, images in there. Let's see, I think the moon is starting to maybe impacting the, the guiding a bit there. That's all right. Not too fussed on that. We're just under a minute and a half to go before this image pops up. exposure more subs for for the moon or just in general of what we're trying to for guiding right now oh the DSO um, yeah it's just a let me do a 10 minute image on this one here um, because it is still the, the original ASI Air it doesn't do the live stacking and I think that would pretty much for what I'm doing right now would be maybe the only advantage to you know, investing in the uh, in the pro version at the moment um, just to kind of build that image up over time whereas uh, with this one at least I'm, I'm setting it for the the 10 minutes we'll ramble on and eventually get back to the, uh, the 10 minute image that kind of pops out there and really it is just because this the camera there's no amp glow and um, that's what I love about this. This is like the main thing that I do love about this camera is that we're not dealing with any of that, uh, the amp glow that pops out on the, the side of the sensor there. So we are left with a, a cleaner image. Uh, where did the RAW store on the ASI Air? On your PC? On the ASI Air, it just saves all the, uh, the FITS files. 
in there. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's not too bad. These images that come out of the uh, 533, they're about 17 megabytes, whereas with my DSLR, each image was 35 megabytes, and you know I was filling it up. Fair, I was filling up the memory card pretty quick. Whereas with these images, when you and these ones, it's uh, you know kind of almost like one and done for the target. So I have more have more folders than probably image files kicking around in the in the file system there, which I do have to um, empty out because if I'm going to do a set of images tonight, I probably just have enough space to do one more set, and then I really have to uh, dump the card there, which then gives me a chance to use. I did pick up a uh, five terabyte hard drive to uh, clear off the laptop so I can well, clear out some space on here, obviously. Um, yeah, I was going to say you could run Deep Sky Stacker Live. I did think about using Deep Sky Stacker Live, um, and that was before I could get the ASI Air to work on here, because it was a, a bit of a task to, um, to get it going because you're only I, I could not get the um, I couldn't run a wired connection from the air to my laptop and then also get internet it wouldn't work um, actually I couldn't even get a wired connection to to jive with the um, the laptop at all there so it was initially trying to have the tablet with team viewer running and then kicking out team viewer to the stream but that kept dropping out and um, eventually I'd managed to get uh, blue stacks. Um, and then, uh, so you can tell it to monitor a folder and it will stack it without calibration frames. I don't know if it would remotely catch the ASI Air folders because they are, the images that we're taking tonight, they are stored on the, uh, on the air through the Wi-Fi signal and then I'm connected to the internet through my Ethernet, which, uh, at the most part, I've always thought it should be much more stable than a Wi-Fi signal, and however, we've seen some buffering going on throughout the night, and that's, for some reason, all of a sudden, the Ethernet connection goes to zero, and I don't know why it's doing that. I've reset my modem tonight, hopefully hoping that that was going to solve things, and, yeah, it didn't work, so that was... Uh, mildly unfortunate and rather infuriating of uh, technology yeah it's uh, this is a, a bit of a, a mickey mouse macgyver moment to try to get all this working so um yeah we'll uh we'll do that there so oh, sorry I, i've left the image of the uh triangle in there so if um let's have a look at that there because that's turned out uh fairly well against the moon and uh I just love how the, this one, how this galaxy fits in the frame just so well. And really it's also just those, uh, the nebulae that you can really see pop out with this filter. And I would definitely like to try this one using something like the, uh, the L Extreme. So we're only using the, 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 the narrowest of the hydrogen alpha and O3 on there and that's it. So maybe kind of getting those to pop even farther than, uh, than what we're seeing right now. Now, I don't really want, I don't know if, uh, if Fulminate is still in here, but they uh, were interested in seeing a galaxy. But yeah, it's, uh, I, I do love shooting the, the Triangulum over Andromeda at the moment because um, well, it is cool to get the, the core of Andromeda. Um, there's just so much. There's almost so much more to see with, uh, with the triangulum with this filter. And again, I do love that uh, that large nebula there. Uh, bear with it's not your neck, it's Twitch. I've seen the same thing happen to other streamers in the last few days. I have noticed that as well. However, I do get the uh, um, I don't know if it might even, well, maybe it is Twitch, I don't know, because I do see on OBS that, uh, you know, my, my status square is green, and the, you know, the, 
upload is fine. We're running it, uh, I think I have it set at like 45 or 5,000 uh, kilobytes per second. But then, yeah, it just drops out. So, if it is Twitch, then I am, I'm, I'm happy that it's them and not me. Because um, I would be, uh, I don't want to be giving Virgin Media an earful when they don't deserve it. However, uh, I have had a, a modem replaced from them, so it's, uh, you know, wh where, how far do we do I do I dig before to, to find the root of the problem there? So, but I guess, yeah, noticing there have been a few others that have dropped out, and I, you know, I associate with it, associate it as that's just mine. So, Actually, this one is turning out. I've had some nights where it's just, I guess the uh, the seeing is a little better as well because I haven't got this much um, definition in the uh, in the arms of the galaxy in a while. Now, okay, yeah, it is. You can definitely really see the gradient coming out in this at the moment, but. Again, give this a proper go. I'd love to use this as a as my luminance layer there. I also haven't given uh, the triangulum a fair shake as well. Again, um, being in the UK, the weather can turn so quickly and uh, and turn against you so quickly. Seems that it does that more often than uh, than in my favor. That uh, you know, you got to pick your targets carefully, and there are some nights like you know, with the uh, when I was shooting like the Whirlpool Galaxy back when the, our first lockdown uh, occurred, I was uh, um, yeah, I had I had gained like so many hours on the target, kind of waiting for other targets to kind of pop up there. I didn't realize how much time I had accumulated on these uh, these areas there, Mr. Harbstrom. Three cheers for clear skies. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for popping in. How are you, brother? We are, we are dancing in the pale moonlight. Who will be my devil? We're shooting the Triangulum Galaxy at the moment. We've uh, just spent ten minutes on here. So we're just trying to, trying to tea, just get that that nice balance between the uh, contrast and everything there. My pleasure. Thanks for tuning the cosmos. It's it, it is my pleasure to bring you guys as much of the night sky as possible. I uh, am happy to do this. I'm uh, not fussed at all to lose any sleep, and for the most part, it's only ten thirty for me right now. So, really, I think there's still another couple hours to go, and uh, especially with where the moon is right now, we're gonna be looking at that for a bit and uh, be fighting with that as a, at a moment there. Astro Caller, how are you? Thank you very much for coming in. We uh, yeah, said so we are uh, at the mercy of the moon, but we're trying to get as many targets around the area as possible just to, uh, to see what's out there, see what we can, what we can witness among the, uh, among the stars there. We've uh, just finished a, a 10 minute image on the, uh, the Triangulum Galaxy there. Uh, good mate, sorry, had issues with my guiding. That has been the <laughs> a topic that's kind of come up um, fairly often tonight, is the, uh, the trials and tribulations that we've had with guiding and um, how I had given up on PhD 2 very quickly and uh, have adopted the uh, ASI Air's guiding capabilities rather quickly. And I think uh, I've been having a, a little, a little bit of issue with the uh, guiding kind of going off kilter because the moon is uh, is impacting things. So this will also actually be a good time for me to try out the. Um, is, there, is it lunar? We got the lunar tracking on here. 
Yes, we do. So I can move off of Sidereal in a moment and go over to Lunar and just see how well it keeps it in frame. Because uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to see any, not be able to use guiding. I think it's just going to be way too focused on there. Yeah, let me, uh, I'm going to save the one. I, have, I think, for the most part, the Triangulum has been uh, the most imaged galaxy. I think it, it's one of the most satisfying shots to uh, take of a galaxy at the moment. I'm happy it's um, readily available in this, uh, this area of the night sky. And I do have, there is a comparison image that I do have on my Instagram page of shooting this in broadband and narrowband. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's the, I, cool contrasting image there of what uh, what we can see now versus what is uh, surrounding that area uh, I've just bought the ASI air for my red cat so it's nice to see this live cool do you get the pro version or did you pick up one of the uh, originals I thought about myself of getting a, a red cat but then um, just the, I think my, my mount at the moment would be a bit overkill for that uh, scope, so I'd almost be having it in like a guide position. You did get the pro, cool. Um, I was thinking for the, because uh, I'm using the original ASI Air, so I'm kind of lacking the, uh, I think the video capabilities of it and live stacking. That's uh, at times that is kind of the one thing that's drawing me to the Air. We were uh, discussing earlier about uh, not having a chance, or not, not having the capabilities of doing that, and trying to figure out a way how to pull the uh, images out of the ASI Air whilst we're doing this. Um, yeah, well, I guess largely in part the, uh, the whole interface is going to be going to be largely the, the same. There's probably a few more options on the Air, but um, yeah, have you? You never had. You, this is the first time having the an ASA Air, right? Because I mean, overall, it's been it's a, a pleasure to use. Um, and it's it's very straightforward. Yeah, the what I do like is the I like the annotation tool on there because it. There we go. It's <laughs> filling up more of the screen. I don't know if I can zoom out anymore there. This is a these are single subs that I do. I take uh, usually it's about a ten minute image that I'll take, and we'll uh, you know take a look at the image that's kind of kicked out in the end there. So I'm using the ASI five thirty three MC Pro to uh, shoot these images. So that was the uh, the whole thing with that was the having zero amp glow was. Uh, a big influencer for purchasing the camera and being able to do this so we're not having that uh, um, you know that little spike of uh, interference that's coming up on there so I um, depending on some of the whatever targets I might do five minutes and boost up the gain a bit but we have calm winds um, actually we have basically no wind so I'm not worrying about the scope shaking last night however we had uh, I said 25 mile an hour sustained winds and in about the 30 to 35 mile an hour dusts. So any imaging last night was right out the window despite being just as clear as it was tonight. So that was uh, mildly annoying. However, uh, last night's stream was pretty fun. Um, just kind of chatting about anything and everything um, in and around astronomy and astrophotography and all other points in between. So that was uh, turned out to be what I thought was going to be a three it was going to be just a, an hour or so that I was going to just kind of, you know, shoot the breeze a bit and maybe edit my layout a little on the, um, for the stream to end up being about three and a half hour gab fest somehow. Um, just kind of kept going on and yeah, that was, uh, it was a, a good night because all I kind of did was end the stream and I didn't have to cover up the scope or anything like that. So tonight I'm looking to maybe and well i say I end the stream at about 12 12 30 but um probably look for a target that i can shoot for the remainder of the night because the moon will eventually um get behind the trees in the house uh, however it is 
it is right there. And basically to the east is all I have. Um, so I'll see what's kind of maybe up to the uh, to the northeast and the north and uh, see if we can kind of pick out any images there after we, uh, we move over to the moon, which I may as well try that now. And we'll, uh, we're going to see that for the first time with this scope and camera combo. And maybe it's good, maybe it's not. But I was image, I was shooting Mars at the beginning of the night and just using the focus mode as my uh, kind of makeshift video video mode on this there. And it turned out pretty, it was pretty cool to see it. And it's always good. I love seeing Mars, especially that it actually is available um, at the moment above the roof line and not behind the um, houses. So go fly me to the moon. Yeah, I think uh, I'm gonna change where my head is, so I'm actually looking at the scope. But I am looking at the scope. But it doesn't look like I'm looking at the scope. Solving failed. Alright, that's fine. It doesn't... It's not going to be able to solve it because there's not going to be any stars for it to... Yeah, stop. Cancel that. You're probably on the moon. Let's have a look. Maybe you're not. Yeah, maybe you are. Hey, we are on the moon. All right. This is going to be a little uh, little jiggery pokery on this because I am using the focus mode because that um, kind of acts like a little bit of binning without actually binning. And yeah. Shit, I'm loving this. <laughs> All right, we're gonna play with some settings. We're gonna take a, a tour around the moon, and uh, yeah, I, I like I said before, I haven't been to the moon in so long. So let's uh, let's get a lot of this out of the way. And that's like almost the like a perfect exposure for all of this. But you can really see just that, that bubbling and, and roiling of the atmosphere um, as you kind of see the moon distorting in different ways. Uh, for those who may have not seen a live video of the moon, we, uh, when you're taking pictures of the, the moon, generally you are going to treat it basically as a planet where you're going to take video and eventually process out all these uneven views. and. Uh, kind of where you get those those fleeting moments where you have um, a, a calm atmosphere. Maybe I'll turn that off there. I can't get rid of this little green box because we are in uh, video mode for focusing. But yeah, maybe, uh, let's see. Drop the speed of the. Let's go the other way. Just want to get that Terminator in there as well. Just really see some of those uh, the contrasts. So we're shooting at just about about a frame per second. I wonder if um, 
switching over to preview mode, if that might change things up a bit, however, you know, we're... Oh, let's change the tracking as well to lunar. Maybe we can keep this centered in the frame a lot longer. Maybe keep it a little more steady as well. Ooh, and I see some clouds rolling in, some pesky, annoying clouds. However, we are not guiding, so that is not going to be uh, much of an issue. Let me uh, save some... Okay, actually, so the guide scope is on the moon. Let's uh, drop that exposure length as well. Maybe we can... Oh, it's way down there. All right, so you can also, <laughs> you can also see that my... Uh, scope and guide scope are not completely aligned up. Um, we, let's see what's changed on the weather here. Because, let's go back to the moon for a very hot second. Because we are visited by some clouds. And how long is this? Let's see if there's been a big change in the See where the weather is. How bad is it turning on us tonight? It's still calling for no clouds. So this might be just a little anomaly rolling through there. But again, we're not uh, we're not guiding or anything at the moment. We're on the moon. It's a nice big bright target. So I'm going to. Um, we're going to hang on the moon for a bit. We're going to take a little tour around there and try some different settings as well to get the most out of this target. Um, let's see. Uh, stop guiding. Not waste any energy on that at the moment. Because the moon is going to be way too bright to get any guide stars um, in there. So we're being visited by some a little bit of cloud coverage, which uh, is annoying. However, it's almost um, fortunate that we're um, that we're looking at the moon right now, so it's not going to be impacted too much by the clouds. Uh, can you view the ASA Air from PC? I am viewing, I'm using BlueStacks, the, uh, the Android emulator program, and the, uh, the, uh, the little jiggery pokery that I've done is that um, I have the ASA Air connected via Wi Fi, well, through its Wi Fi signal on my laptop, but I'm connected to the internet with my Ethernet cable, and that has been the only way I've been able to get a uh, steady and reliable connection with the air. Prior to that, um, I was using the I was using the ASI Air with my tablet, and then using TeamViewer to um, get the image from the tablet onto the live stream, and that kept dropping out so often, um, at least you know, half a dozen times every hour. So it's. Uh, it was getting annoying and I wanted to figure out a, a solution to this because otherwise it would be um, not impossible to kind of get this done, but it would just be very frustrating and very um, disappointing for what I wanted to, uh, to achieve with all this there. So, um, yeah, just uh, being able to get this to work in this fashion has been uh, very favorable. James Wade, welcome back. Welcome back. Just got back from voting. Moon looks great. Well, thank you, uh, thank you very much for for doing your patriotic duty in voting. Um, wish you guys all the best in the states right now with uh, on election day, and hopefully um, everybody kind of gets the resolution that they would like to have. Either which way things go. Uh, definitely need to get some details from you. Not keen on using the tablet. Yeah, um, I've had. I've had zero problems with using the, uh, I think the only thing is that uh, using my trackpad 
on the on the laptop is uh, the way I'm kind of zooming in and um, on the images there. Just looking to avoid a civil war. Yeah, I think the only civil war we all enjoyed was uh, Captain America and Iron Man. So yeah, again, hoping for as much of the best possible uh, outcome for you guys. Um, I know it's got to be it's got to be tough. So we can only hope for the best for our for our neighbors down to the south and uh, way 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 south for me. But you know, I'm still a uh, canvas, still my still my home. So and America is still my lovable neighbor. Um, yeah, for as far as using the ASIR on the PC with the BlueStacks, it's, it's really no different than using the tablet overall. And, um, yeah, I think I, I still use the tablet when I'm, if I'm not doing this kind of setup, I'll, uh, I'll have the tablet to hand because it's just easier than carrying the laptop around. Uh, plus my battery has, has reached the end of its life and trying to find a replacement battery for Alienware is difficult for some reason and it's not even that old of a model either so don't know why it's uh, playing up like that for me so another thing to add to the list but let's uh, see we still have still have the clouds and if this was almost any other kind of session I'd be um, fairly disappointed in things but it also, it's saying, I'm going to close the app, get a graded refresh on that, see how much time we have for clouds. It's still saying no clouds. So where these ones have come from, these, uh, these rogue interlopers of our evening's festivities, hopefully they don't stick around very long. Yeah, let's. Uh, I'm gonna move around on the moon here. Let's see what uh, what are the areas we got. Yeah, so get more of that uh, the Terminator in the shot there. So I mean, I could probably change to preview, but I think. Um, yeah, you know, let's do that. Let's, let's give it a shot because we there's there's time to experiment with this. Uh, yeah, I hope they're not coming your way. I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll take the uh, the brunt of the clouds if it keeps your skies clear because uh, we're, we're we're doing a little different uh, we're having a little different goals tonight. Mine can uh, mine will suffer with clouds for a bit now, and it looks like they're I don't know. They're very loosely formed. Yeah, let's see if uh, it's a chain now. Yeah, let's go over a little more exposure there. Does that combat the clouds a bit? Yeah, it helps with, uh, with the view. Bump it up there just a tiny bit there. So for those of you who have just joined in, we are shooting, usually we are shooting some deep space images. However, the clouds are rolling in, and the moon is nice and full and in our way. So we are, we're not going to fight it. We're going to look at the moon and have some cool views of our orbiting satellite. And we are at a... Uh, Let's say 89, 89, 98%, 95% full moon. So we are, uh, it's very bright. And it's just really, really mucking up the images at the moment there. So we'll, uh, we'll deal with that. And the, the best way to deal with the moon is to just face it head on. It's just enough of a, a shadow coming over the moon that you're able to really see some of the depth of these craters there. Because the, uh, 
with a, a, a full 100% full moon, it's nice to you know to look at, but there's it's almost flat and featureless to a, to a degree. So you don't get that uh, you don't really see how deep these craters actually are. Whereas when we uh, yeah this one when we have like a waning a waning moon, we're able to get more of those um, get more details in those craters. I'm just kind of moving the scope bit by bit because I don't often control the scope in this manner, manually, with the, with the ASI Air. So let's say uh, we're going to move to a different mode. This was on the focus mode, which almost kind of treats it like a bit of a video that we're looking at there, which kind of helps combat the, uh, the roiling atmosphere that we have to deal with. So we change this to continuous preview, so we're going to constantly be taking short photos. So it's almost like a video. Although it does, uh, it takes a little bit longer to load these out. So this may not be the, uh, the best way to do it. However, those who have, uh, some more who have jumped in, thank you very much for, uh, for coming on in. We are taking live images of the moon and we're just kind of doing a little bit of experimenting with the uh, our imaging rig at the moment because it is cloudy and it does look like the clouds are um, on the way at the moment. So shortly we should have some clear skies. But I'm going to stick on the moon for a little bit because uh, A, it's interesting. B, it's cool. C, it's really cool. And D, it's my show and I can do what I want. Uh, although, if you do drop a tier 3 sub, then you can control my telescope the whole night while you tell me where to go, and I will go there, it, within reason. <laughs> but you don't have to, God, God no. <laughs> it's, uh, it, subscribing is not a requirement over here. It's, uh, yeah, it's welcomed, but it's not necessary at all. Uh, that's not the, the whole point. My whole point, the whole point of this is for me to share the night sky with you guys as much as possible. Right now, we are imaging the moon. And I'm going to switch back to the previous, um, actually, no, let me change the, let's change the binning. Let's see how, see how well that kind of changes things up there. I might even kick up the images a little faster. They are going to be smaller. think that I'm probably going to go back to the uh, the focus mode which a gives a bit of a larger view of the moon it's nice to kind of get the full um, the full image of the moon however getting a little um, visually closer to the moon is a little more interesting so yeah, let's change that up there let's go back to focus And there we go, we have a nice, uh, better shot of the moon there, nice and, uh, nice and wide. And I can't really zoom in on this, this is the focus mode where you are. Uh, actually, what I can do, let's, let's get really, let's get really cheeky, let's get, let's, Clouds coming out of the way there, so maybe a little bit brighter. I really only do for the brightness. I'm just changing the uh, the exposure length at the moment. 
but let's see. It's going to be a tinier box, but we're getting an even closer concentrated shot of the moon there. And you can just really see just how much the atmosphere affects these images. Um, because all that shaking really is from the, the atmosphere roiling and um, yeah, which causes that distortion. Uh, kind of like when you're seeing a mirage like on a, a hot uh, a hot road and um, you know, the, the, whatever you're kind of looking at beyond is uh, you have maybe those fleeting seconds of, of, of a clear image. But um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, I've never actually shot the moon like this before with, uh, with this scope, this camera, um, this kind of focal length, and just this manner of trying to just, just visually look at the moon, which uh, doesn't happen that often. And mainly, you know, I am, I, I'm going after the more, uh, the, the larger and the more attractive um, nebulae. So, and for the most part for astrophotography, the moon is not a welcomed object in the sky because it cuts off a lot of the uh, of the area that you're trying to you're trying to image uh, and as you can see the only view that I have is to the east which is being occupied by the moon so you know we uh, we deal with what we have for astrophotography and uh, yeah, I'm, we're touring the moon right now for probably the foreseeable future, but you know, we're, uh, I'm always up for talking about astronomy, astrophotography, uh, anything else in between, really. So, you know, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate uh, all the follows that, uh, that you guys have done. Uh, thank, uh, very thankful for our subscribers. We have just reached the level of Twitch affiliate uh, last Thursday. Uh, I guess Friday morning when I got the uh, the email. So things are changing up a little bit for the, uh, I guess for the better, um, being a little more positive with uh, how all this is looking. We're um, you know, going to be building a, a new channel and it's going to kind of come, not, uh, there's going to be a drastic change, but we uh, want to have some more interesting uh, layouts and just some easier things. I mean, the, some of the more notable bits is that our channel coins, our, uh, our, our channel reward points um, have been decided and they are in the form of photons. Because just the same as with astrophotography as we're collecting photons, you guys are collecting photons as well, which will uh, equate to some type of reward where you could, at the moment right now, you can highlight your message and, you know, it's, uh, definitely going to be visible for, for me, for everyone else to see, and you can just kind of get a little, a little more attention that way, but we're going to, I'll try to figure out some other options that will make uh, it a bit more of an enjoyable experience, and uh, maybe add some, some level of uh, interactivity, I guess, so, um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see how this progresses, it's, uh, totally a work in progress. I'll go take a look at some other areas of the moon. Because there are there's some I can see some clouds mildly threatening um, just to the southeast. So well I said the moon is nice and bright so it's easy to uh, to get these images because it's going to punch through that thin cloud layer whereas if we start doing uh, deep sky exposures it's going to just kind of create this haze around the, the entire image there and you're not going to get a, um, a favorable image out of that there but I mean the moon has countless features that are really cool to look at and if I had my uh, map of the moon with me I could definitely tell you more of the um, distinct areas.
also I'm not going to open up Firefox because that causes issues. And I'm not looking for issues, I'm just looking to look at just looking to share some cool images of space. Right, so we are, we're looking at the moon, and it's just, like I said, we, we've just kind of coming, we've just come out of a full moon at the moment, so it is uh, about 90 some odd percent. So we're uh, just trying to make the most out of the session right now, because it's, uh, Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're at the mercy of a full moon, uh, at, a, at a very bright moon, so it's not, there's a lot of objects to our, to our view that isn't uh, accessible. So we, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking at the, the brightest object because there have also been clouds rolling through and really they don't uh, cause much of an impact on the image. If we're uh, a, we're taking video, so it's uh, we're not gonna have any wispy clouds rolling through. But uh, I think it's always cool to look at the uh, the darkest that dark area along there is called the Terminator line, and that just kind of that boundary between the dark and light side is uh, it really highlights just how deep some of these craters are, because you can't uh, you just don't always get that depth when you're looking at a full moon, because the, you know the sun is beating straight down on the moon, you just don't get the, the definition as you uh, as you normally would. So I'm going to pick another little area, and we're going to kind of zoom in on there. And it's a, it, this is also more of a digital zoom at the moment, because um, the mode that I'm using is actually the, uh, the focus mode, which you would do to pick out stars, whereas um, we're kind of doing a little... A little uh, Little jiggery pokery to try and get some uh, some details out here. So let's let's go over to this part here. And zoom in and kind of get a better look at that there. And you can just see just the way how the just how much distortion there is from the atmosphere because yeah that's also the same reason of why uh, stars twinkle. This is fucking awesome. Thanks, Patsy. <laughs> I it's you know I haven't I haven't imaged the moon in such a long time, and there haven't been uh, you know most of the time I'm shooting deep sky images on a moonless night so we're not dealing with this but we're uh, we're facing the moon head on tonight and we're we're looking at it in as great of a detail as uh, as we can right now. Uh, so I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm turning you up for a second there. I just use my Huawei P30 Pro to take photos of the moon. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I shot, I shot, you know, when, when, when you, you look at the moon and it's like kind of large on the horizon. You take out your phone, you take a shot of it, and the thing is like, there's a tiny little, little point there. Um, and that also is due to just the, the perspective um, that we see the moon. So also another way to almost combat that is apparently if you are you take a look upside down look at the moon upside down from your orientation and it does kind of um, change the perspective uh, i've shot the moon um, at different focal lengths and it uh, the, the the size of it is uh, you can see how much it actually shrinks in you know the camera view because the the camera doesn't have our depth perception so it does look a little, uh, a little different there. 
Yeah, so that is like, it's a bit of a, a digital zoom on there for now because we are shooting at 980 millimeters, which will fit the whole moon in the frame that we're at there. But at the native focal length of this telescope, we can get a little tighter and have some more details pop through. But um, to change that is uh, taking apart the image, the image train on the scope there. So, like you said. This is, uh, is what the yeah so that's our uh, that's our sky at the moment <laughs> now if you uh, you're looking at the moon through a telescope and you hold your mobile phone up to the uh, wall piece, and you can uh, you know just well, that's not a bad image there I'm looking at uh, pussy screen at the moment you know, for, for, for a mobile phone, that is pretty damn good. You know, it, it all comes down to the resolving power of your uh, of your lens. That uh, depends on what kind of yeah, image you're going to get of the, of the moon. <laughs> and yeah, even if you're trying to take a shot of the moon with your mobile phone, you know, there, there's, there's that level of shaking. So, yeah, it's tough. I'm gonna turn you down for a sec, Plessy. Thank you. <laughs> I just I had to share this with uh, with as many people as possible there. And I know that you guys would be interested in this just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, for those of you who may be, who are on the channel right now and you haven't, uh, if you check out Putsy, he uh, he is a, another Twitch streamer. He does a lot of video games and some fun features on his stream that uh, is really interactive. A lot more interactive than what we're doing, but um, yeah, it's uh, he's got a, he's got a fun stream to uh, he uh, interacts with the chat uh, all the time. He's uh, never boring, and yeah, just a really cool guy to, uh, to hang out with on a on any given night. Really, you don't know what's going to happen on his stream. Um, you know, maybe a little more out of left field at times, but. Uh, yeah, just uh, very, very enjoyable. Mojo Jojo, how are you tonight? Thanks for popping in there. Yeah, we're, um, like I said, we're taking the moon head on tonight because it is in our way. <laughs> um, and also we've had some surprise clouds roll through. It's, uh, yeah, mildly, mildly annoying, but... We're uh, we're on a very bright target, so we're not we're not impacted by the clouds that much. So, yeah, we're uh, taking a, a tour of the moon. And again, if I had my moon map available, then I would definitely have um, more information on the moon. And to be fair, I have I had a lot more information in my head about the moon. A couple of years ago, and yeah, to be fair, there's more about nebulae than the moon that I can spout about. Um, let's see. Let me just try. I, I got some. I got some moon facts here. Let me find it. I have a. I did make a moon poster, so I should remember some of those bits there. Where is my? I'll find it. I'll get this information. We will, we will share images. We will share ideas about the moon. So the moon. There's some quick facts about the moon that I have available. Is it the moon's diameter is. 2,158.8 miles in diameter, which equates to 3,474.2 kilometers in diameter. Now there are some. If you can have, if you can find a eight-inch globe of the of the Earth and a two-inch, say, well, eight-inch eight ball in diameter and, and another ball that's two inches of diameter, 
and you basically have the rough size of the moon and the earth and the moon and if you are spacing them out you would have the earth on one side of the room and the moon would be about 23 feet away from the earth and that is your scale model of our uh, earth and moon so yeah if you have those those things to hand you uh, yeah you can kind of use that to to kind of get an idea of just how far away uh, things are compared to the size and if you were to have the international space station on this scale it would be about a quarter of an inch off the off your eight inch ball so it kind of gives you a bit of perspective on things there. I did have a model set up when I was doing a project that I did have a, a, a globe that was eight inches in diameter and had a cue ball that was two inches of diameter to represent the moon. And it's just interesting to see just how far, how much space is in between those two bodies. And um, knowing that each planet can still fit between the earth and the moon. So yeah, just those little little things there that uh, you kind of you, you pick up along the way. Let's move over to the other side of the moon, around the uh, kind of sea of tranquility. You can't see any of the Apollo landings. Uh, we're just way way too far away. The, res the resolving power of this isn't um, isn't of that caliber. And uh, really, you can't even you wouldn't be able to see. The, uh, the landing sites from Earth. You definitely need to, the, the Lunar Reconnaissance orbit, Orbiter is one of those, uh, it's close enough to actually get uh, a view of the landing sites. Um, because yeah, some of these, the craters that we're looking at are, you know, a hundred, a couple hundred miles in diameter. So it is, uh, as, as tiny as everything looks, it's, it's still pretty massive, still a pretty massive structure on there. And it's it, it, even for me, like kind of realizing these the, the scale of some of these uh, some of these areas is is crazy. It's incredible. Um, so yeah, just kind of taking some here. Here's a, an interesting spot to look at there because you can really see the. Uh, the depth of the craters here. And again, the that that movement we're looking at isn't the uh, isn't the scope itself, it is actually the atmosphere that's distorting the, the image that we're looking at there. So that's why when you are shooting something like planets or, or the uh, or the moon, you are taking short video clips to catch those brief moments of stability in the atmosphere. So that's why if you take a, a single shot of the moon, it's not, uh, you know, maybe at a distance it'll, it'll look all right on the, say if you're taking it like with a mobile phone or something like that. But if you're trying to get like a close-up image, chances are you're going to get a blurry and distorted image. So that's why you got to do um, video or like a, a succession of quick exposures and then combine them in, uh, in a stacking software to be able to pull out those details. Now, yeah, for the most part, we're going to be uh, kind of touring around the moon. Like I said, it is blocking our view of many, uh, many areas. It does impact guiding a little bit. So, you know, we're, uh, we, we take what we can at the moment. Um, tomorrow night is uh, looking to be just as clear, and the moon will be rising just a little bit later. And also, it's going to be in more of a... A shadow will be at about 89% of a full moon. Uh, the weather, again, totally calm weather. Maybe clouds rolling in at about 1 in the morning, but we'll kind of wrap things up before then. Um, but yeah, the rest of the night kind of actually goes a little bit south um, as the temperatures drop. But we are uh, approaching that, the, that dew point where the uh, we're going to get a lot of condensation. Thursday, unfortunately, has uh, it looks like it is uh, being a little unfavorable. If anything, if uh, well, I'll keep an eye on how Thursday goes. We might even uh, 
excuse me, uh, I might start a stream a little earlier on Thursday just to kind of get some time on some uh, some areas, which would be starting at about uh, almost close to six o'clock Greenwich Mean Time on Thursday. But I'll try and update the schedule on here. And we'll. Uh, you can kind of keep up to date on that. I try to keep the schedule updated, but it is as dynamic as the weather, unfortunately. Uh, the only time when I do um, announce that there is going to be like a rainy day astronomy or we'll do some photo processing, those one, those schedules I'll keep to that. And those kind of come up um, during cloudy periods rather regularly. Pardon me. Um, but if at the same time, we have clouds and all of a sudden we get some clear skies then uh, yeah we'll uh, we will we will break from photo processing and we will do some uh, try and get some astrophotography going because it doesn't take it doesn't take long to to get set up when uh, in the current configuration that I'm at and also, with the current configuration, while well, it looked like there was one viewer, there are 10 viewers. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Um, by no means are you obligated to make any noise in the chat. But if you do have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them or to attempt to answer them. Or if I don't have the answer, I will research and try to get more information for you for the next time around. Because uh, the more you guys ask, the more I'm going to have to have to know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to know. So... I do study astronomy independently, and that is in between this and my full-time job. However, kind of doing doing this and re, and just repeating back uh, a lot of the information that I've picked up over the over the years just kind of helps me solidify that knowledge and is uh, yeah, it's uh, a good a good way to just to, to learn a little more about what's beyond our our planet there. Um, Loving this ASR. Yeah, this is for, you know, probably, uh, Astro, uh, for, um, uh, yeah, it's a user screen name, <laughs> uh, caller. It is, um, a little bit of jiggery pokery to get this, uh, kind of video mode working. Whereas when, uh, if you got the ASI Air Pro, you do have that dedicated video mode for doing planetary and, uh, lunar imaging. Um, but yeah, I'm just uh, doing what I can to, uh, get some images and this has turned out way way better than I thought it was actually because with your when you're doing the focus mode it does almost work um, what do we have there uh, a thousand by a thousand so we're almost binning at three so uh, I am the ASI Air is connected directly into into the mount it's the uh, I guess the newer model of the EQ6R Pro so we have um, yeah, just a USB uh, A to USB B. Is that right? You know the, what the the printer cable <laughs> um, just plugs into the uh, into the into the EQ6R Pro and then just straight into the ASI Air. So it's uh, yeah everything is just being controlled through that. I ditched the hand controller the second night I used the ASI Air because I realized I didn't need it at all. Uh, I think I, I used the, the hand controller just to do that initial setup, and then once I did a, a found a little uh, couple more couple videos online. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember exactly whose they were, but uh, yeah, it was uh, ditch the hand controller and everything is controlled with the ASI Air. And like I do, I have like I said, I have two cables connected in the. Uh, in the ASI Air, and that's just the mount and the uh, ASI 533, and the rest of that is the, the mini guide cam is just daisy chained into the 533, so there's less cabling that I have to uh, to worry about there. So that is more than favorable. And actually, I was worried I couldn't find there was a, a little smaller cable that came with the uh, with the 533, and I thought I lost it, and somehow it appeared in the bottom of the bag. And uh, so I don't have heavy cables kind of dangling around there. Uh, using the RC cable to power the dew heater from the ASI Air. I, I'm, I'm playing it a little, uh, 
a little fast and loose here, and I do not have a dew heater yet for this uh, this scope. I have uh, uh, I've been being a little cheeky by um, yeah not having a dew because I this is a recently acquired scope and um, yeah I don't have a system set up for that yet so that is kind of one of the uh, next purchase that's uh, that's on the docket for all this is to get that uh, that do here for for the primary and the secondary um, mirror on the RC8 and then a little a little one for the uh, for the guide scope so uh, what I'm looking at it's probably it's about all said and done with the cabling and things like that were and in devices it's about 220 pounds with everything so yeah that's the uh, the next thing I'm saving up towards and yeah once that's uh, that's all in hand then we can definitely we can safely uh, reliably image throughout the night um, although this uh, how the forecast is right now it's um, yeah, right now the, the temperatures and the dew point are, are fantastic right now. Last week, um, there was some fogging that started to occur at the end of the session. So I, uh, yeah, kind of had to, well, I was kind of ending the stream anyway at that point, but I would have had to abandon the whole um, imaging night completely. So, um, yeah, once I get that all sorted out, there's like, there's no worries on what we're doing. But, um, yeah, there's, I never knew that there's actually a secondary mirror dew heater available for, um, for Newtonians. So I thought that was kind of a cool little, uh, little thing I found out there. Yeah, when I, actually, when I went outside to set up, I could easily see my, uh, see my breath. So I was kind of worried about how things were going. But, um, yeah, it's... Oh yeah, what is the, we are currently where I am, six degrees, dew points at four, and then uh, we really don't get any significant chances until about five in the morning. So, like I was uh, saying before, when, uh, kind of when I wrap up the, uh, look at the clouds, I might even, might abandon actually imaging later on once this is all, uh, said and done because these clouds are absolutely randomly appearing in this giant M in the sky which uh, I'm only assuming is for moon or a 3 or a W depending on your perspective or an E is uh, yeah, kind of threatening the area of the sky that I normally would be uh, shooting at, so. Or, uh, you know, the, uh, the unpredictability of the, of the UK weather. And then you can also see, for some, like, my neighbor has some exhaust from their heater that, uh, that vents just to the, uh, let me see, if I was looking to the southeast, my imaging would be totally shot, even if on a totally clear night, because my neighbors like to vent their washing machine, their, their heater in that area. Annoying. <laughs> but let's get back to the uh, Why look at it far away when we can look at this close up? Actually, things are looking... Yeah, I was gonna say they're looking stable, but it's not. It's still, still moving around like crazy. But yeah, I am incredibly happy with this, uh, with this kind of <laughs> level of imaging of the moon right now. Because uh, yeah, I, I was I was really worried that I was just gonna have this wide shot of the moon. Um, and it'd be like, yeah, it'd be all right. It'd be cool. It's still the moon. I mean, it's still great to look at. But using the focus mode on the air to do this is uh, very satisfying. I 
that we have uh, enough of a, a terminator going that we're able to to get some of these crater details as well so i mean there's there's enough information on the moon See if I can Yeah, okay. Actually I can start to get some information on the moon here. At least what we're looking at. Possibly. That requires some specific clicks, however. That would work a little better. However, um, what we're seeing in here is the is the uh, the mare of the room of the moon, which is uh, kind of these these dark patches, which were originally thought to be like bodies of water, but obviously. Uh, That went out of the window once telescopes were widely able to resolve these images that we were looking at, um, much like how they thought there were canals on the on Mars. But there is absolutely no no sorry, I'm just trying to move the, the scope a bit, but it is moving incredibly so I should probably go slew the other way there. Get down to uh, this might go uh, frame. No, we're good. Yeah, so just taking a a wild tour of the moon, you can uh, see as much of the, the sights as possible. Because we are at a, a decent focal length, and also this kind of a uh, bit of a, a digital zoom that's on here is uh, how we're able to get a closer view of all the, uh, the craters there. I think if I can change the exposure length a bit here, we might see a little more contrast in these areas. This area is the uh, the Oceanus Procellarum, and what these were named after, I do not have to hand. I just kind of have the names. The uh, the Sea of Tranquility, where more of the uh, Apollo missions had landed, is a little up to the up and to the right. So we'll uh, we can always pop back over there for a second. But just uh, looking at the At this area of the moon, trying to get the scope to cooperate. There we go. So I can get a little more. Uh, I just want to get some more contrast in this area because it is because uh, there are some impact craters that are better seen with a little. Uh, a little shorter exposure. There we go. Let's, uh, let's adjust the exposure time on here. There you go. 
I'm just going to get some more details of the moon there. So because we are shooting to the east and the moon is in the east, we are at the mercy of, uh, of, a, nearly, of a nearly full moon. We just come out of a full moon from Halloween on Saturday. So the moon is at about 80, 89, 95, uh, 94% there. So it is still very bright in the sky. It's impacting a great deal of the uh, the sky so doing a lot of deep sky imaging at the moment even with the filter that we have that is a narrow band filter it's not going to be um, the images can s tend to be a little washed out so not being able to pick up as many details at the moment but like I said we're making the most of it we are looking at the moon which is a target that I haven't viewed from for quite a while there Jen Alexiev, how are you? Hi from Switzerland. Well, your sky is better than mine. Are you, uh, are you currently clouded out in your area? There was a few clouds that rolled in. Did you send those over just for spite? <laughs> well, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate that very much from, from Switzerland. Always interesting to to hear where people are from. You do not have to always disclose where you are, but that's cool. Um, anonymity is totally fine out here. But yeah, just uh, happy to be sharing as much of the night sky as possible. Like I say, usually we are shooting deep sky images. Um, but it's... Like I said we're at the mercy of the moon. Last night it was way too windy to even be shooting the moon. So... We're, uh, we're making the most of it as much as we can there. Don't know if it's fog or clouds. Well, we're, uh, we're kind of in for some fog soon. Well, I think tomorrow they're calling for some fog. But uh, right now, while it says it's clear skies, it, uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem to be cooperating at the moment. Where we've had some random clouds roll through. And it does look like there might be a little, little bit of wispy clouds going on at the moment. So, um, that's it. Real smoothie. Hey, my man, how are you doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, the image is looking stable. Yeah, it's actually not too bad overall. So, uh, we're cool with that. Um, <laughs> Pat say you're too kind throwing these viewers my way man I appreciate it so much how are you doing guys putsy fam let's hear you boys let's hear you boys and girls how are you we are peering at the moon we are looking deep well not deep we are looking at our closest our closest neighbor and um yeah, just making the most of a, a full moon night. So I hope you guys have enjoyed Putsy's stream. Putsy, thank you very much once again. Um, always fun being in on your channel. Mojo Jojo. Stream hopping. Appreciate that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's move to a little more, uh, a little more interesting area of the moon. Just taking it slow and steady there. Like I say, we're just coming off of a a full moon, so it is still nice and bright. It doesn't make uh, doesn't make well for long exposures at the moment, but uh, yeah, yeah, no problem, my dude. Just exposing more people to astrophotography. Putsy love, yes, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Just want to expose as many people to the night sky as possible. Uh, I'm gonna head off and get some shot. Yeah, you take you take it easy, man. Um, yeah, I get some rest. I'll uh, probably be going for another, but maybe about another hour, um, depending on how uh, things go. I think I might try to aim a little more to the north and see if I can get some targets there. But yeah, uh, thank you very much. All right. Good night. Good morning. Take it easy, Putsy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for bringing more people in there, exposing them to the. To the wonders of our moon. 
usually we're looking at some deep sky, but tonight it is just it is the moon, which I haven't actually done something like this before. So it is kind of fun to tour around the moon and see um, see it in much greater detail, um, and you know, make a little more greater detail than some other people may have seen the moon. So we are shooting this with an eight-inch telescope, and right now I'm doing a little um, said a little. This isn't exactly what the uh, equipment is designed for. Um, usually this uh, option isn't available to uh, for this camera, but I am making the most of it. And uh, usually on this scene, we're just using this to focus the star. However, it works out really well for looking at the moon. So we're just going to get to uh, an area which is known as the, uh, the Terminator line, so you kind of can see a lot more, um, a lot more details and more depth of the craters because when it is face on like this, you don't see exactly how deep this uh, all this goes. So we're going to we're just coming over to the crater Tico, named after Tico Brahe, is a large and very prominent impact crater, which uh, is easily visible from with the naked eye unassisted however in much greater detail you can see that there have been uh, more impacts on this side on this area of the moon you know I have a dream of migrating to Canada but alas it's just a dream You know what, you can, you can one day make those dreams become a reality, as hokey as that sounds. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've packed up from Canada, I've moved to the UK, and that was uh, almost 10 years ago now. So really anything is possible. You never know where life is going to take you. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for sticking around after the raid. Um, appreciate that. What we usually do... Um, my name's Tom. I am the Astro Canuck, and we take images of deep space whenever there is a clear sky. And thankfully, we've had some clear skies roll around, and it's been so long with, uh, with all these clouds rolling through the UK. And to have some stable weather roll through is, uh, yeah, just, just makes us all, all, all the more worth it. Because all I want to do is share with you guys as much of the sky as possible. Um, yeah, I do live in the UK. I'm in the east of England. And, sorry. Cough. There we go. Yeah, in the east of England. Uh, the weather has, when the weather turns, it always turns for the worse. We never have a, it's, it's rare that we have a cloudy night forecast and all of a sudden it clears up, so which is also unfortunate because if I resign myself to um, not doing any imaging and a cloudy night turns clear, uh, well, it is, it doesn't take long to kind of get things set up. It can be uh, a bit of a, really got to force yourself to get up off the couch or just um, set things up. And that's, that happens now and then. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> East. Yeah, uh, being in Essex, it is a, a, a bit of a, a distinct accent. However, I've, I've grown used to it. <laughs> Cloudy nights in the UK last about two months. Yeah, it can. Um, Astro caller, I mean you uh, yourself. You're you're no stranger to the weather here. And uh, yeah, like we we'll take a, a clear night any day of the week and just take get as much of it. Uh, get out. Get as much out of it as possible, because uh, yeah, it can. The weather can turn, and we're uh, you rarely get sun. <laughs> well, I, but what 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 is uh, good and bad about uh, you know kind of where our latitude is? Um, sorry, longitude. Um, Southeast Kent should always be clear. Yeah, it's. Uh, Oh, well. in the winter, you know, come this time now we have, um, 
go astro astronomical dark, and that's when the sun is no longer impacting the night sky, and we have as dark of a sky as you're going to get. Lasts from about uh, what we got, maybe quarter quarter to six uh, in the evening until a little after five in the morning, once at, at its peak, I guess. Um, so we do have some nice long dark nights. Uh, the on the flip side of that comes summertime. We our skies do not get even don't get dark enough for um, truly deep sky f uh, photography. So it's kind of uh, yeah, you're doing eight hours. That, that's the beauty of it. That's uh, you know I could have started uh, at about you know at about six o'clock tonight, but um, you know finishing up work. It's uh, you know kind of want to get at least a little. I want to get a little break between screens. However, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, normally in the summertime it is. It's it's tough because you really got it because there is a, a point in the in the images. I know if you can you can see your images being um, coming out in the camera there, that you can see that okay it's 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 lighter but it's getting a little darker, a little darker, a little darker. Now it's getting lighter. Now it's getting lighter. It's like there is almost zero point between the darkest part of the the sky and the when it starts to lighten up again. So you can really see that gradient um, happen. Uh, speaking of the big rain, you can see we're having some clouds roll through, which is why being on the moon, being nice and bright, and we are doing short exposure, so even if I like, punch this up to a little quicker exposure, we can uh, refine it. I don't have any histogram. I don't think I have a... Uh, yes, actually I actually do. What am I saying? Um, I could play with a histogram on there. Get some, really get some contrast. God, I've been using the exposure like a sucker. I've been so I was so excited about just being able to image the moon. I didn't even take into account uh, adjusting the histogram. Let's see. Let's go. Look at that. We've been having some almost fuzzy, faded views of the moon, like chumps. My God. But it only mucked around with the histogram so I hit I hit everything because there's uh, such a little real estate at the moment in this uh, this focus mode yeah okay it's getting a little blown out there maybe it's uh, let's back that no wanna... how's it going through this is uh, this is the weather that we're dealing with it's supposed to be completely clear skies um, well that was clearly a lie uh, that's it here we go editing the stream on the go which doesn't always work out that well uh, holy potatoes 18 18 viewers in here at the moment thank you guys very much for tuning in or uh, we're shooting live images of the night sky with uh, this telescope here there we go. That is an 8 inch telescope and it is a Richie Crechian design. So, right in the back here is your pri is the large primary mirror, mm -hmm. and up at the front is the tiny little secondary mirror, which bounces the information back into this camera right here, which is a astronomy dedicated camera. It has a much more um, sensitive image sensor on the back there than your regular DSLR. It is also able to cool to sub zero temperatures. Um, and that is right now cooling at minus 15 degrees Celsius because it is a cool night and I don't have to push the cooler on the, on the camera that hard. So it's, uh, usually this camera can cool 35 degrees below ambient. So if you're on a, a hot summer evening at about 20 degrees Celsius, you can still get this down to a sub-zero temperature comfortably. Uh, I would use it maybe at minus five. I wouldn't go with a full push it to 100% uh, because that's uh, start to decrease the life of your um, equipment there. So usually at about 10 degrees is what uh, below zero is what I run this camera at. But I'm just trying, uh, we're trying out some different things tonight because I knew it was going to be, we we're going to have the, the moon impacting things and we wanted to try to get, uh, reduce as much noise in the camera as possible there. 
you got a degree in astrophysics? I do not. I have a degree in graphic design. Um, I am a graphic designer um, of 20 years and a, an astronomy nerd of about uh, 35 years and a astrophotographer of about four years. So it has been in the last, uh, like I said, the last four years where this has really ramped up and given a, a fair go of things. And it's just one of those things where I want to share this knowledge that I've, that I've uh, accumulated over the past four years, um, really focusing on astronomy and also um, kind of sharing these images of the night sky. I respect you who pursue their interests. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, uh, yeah, I, 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 visually looking at the, at the moon through a telescope is great, but at the same time, it does feel, to me, it feels a little selfish that I want more people to see this. And I think I, I almost need more people to see this because, you know, there's, there's more, there's more out there to see than, you know, than some people can, can witness from a city if you have, um, you know, if you have a lot of light pollution in your area, there are only a select amount of stars that you're able to see in the night sky because a lot of it is going to be impeded by, um, you know, artificial light. So you you have to travel out a lot farther to uh, to be able to see any significant amount of stars. And um, I seem to have a sliver, which is taking away my attention. Um, yeah, you have to, uh, you got to travel out a little farther to be able to see some stars. I'm in an area that is kind of the mid, uh, a bit of a mid ground between the, uh, the darkest sky site and the most light polluted site. So, and that is also for me, it's being impacted by the increased addition of LED streetlights being added into my area. So it is, uh, it's a little tough to be able to, uh, to see the night sky. So you have to combat that with uh, different filters and you know, different uh, exposure lengths so you can cut out as much light pollution as possible to try and get a, a meaningful image out of, uh, out of your telescope there. Because otherwise you can, uh, if you take a long, long exposure without a, a light pollution filter, you kind of end up with almost like a beige gradient uh, right across the image there, and you're only again, your your only your brightest stars are going to be av uh, available to see there. It's uh, our form of light <laughs> of visible pollution at the moment is these clouds rolling through, so you can kind of see them uh, crossing over the moon there. And we're just trying to just trying to find that uh, that sweet spot for uh, for things there. Um, Respect to you for committing to your interest. Thank you. Uh, once again, thank you so much. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, this is what I love to do. This is uh, what I, what I want to do is I want to, I just want to share, if, if I could sit here and do a 24 hour stream of, uh, of the, the sun and stars, I would happily do that, um, including some bathroom breaks, but yeah, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to sit here and, uh, and just yammer on about this as much as possible. Bubba Zelnik. Hi, Moon. Hi, Mom. How are you? Thanks for popping in. Uh, living in an Asian household just made me fearful of doing something out of my discipline of study. I mean, I can't, you know, speak for uh, other people's situation, but sometimes you, you know, I mean, it's, it sounds cliche, but, you know, just kind of going for what you believe in. And, you know, for me, it's, it's astronomy. It's, uh, it's just kind of one of the, it, it's, it's like it, we're seeing the unseen, you know? Uh, so, it, yeah, it's just one of the, it's, sometimes I really am at a loss for words of just how incredible some of these sites are. And... I think what I, I, I'm going to try and pull up an earlier image because right now these clouds are actually really getting bad and it looks like Astro Collar is not having a good time either. 
Um, sorry, mate. Uh, my guy is going tits up again. So I'm going to have to leave you. Take a bit of my take a bat to my mount or guide scope. Sent me a message on Insta. Check it out. Hope you can join. All right. Astro Caller, thank you very much for popping in there. Sorry your uh, your guiding has gone gone to pot. So we'll, uh, it looks like overall a lot of the imaging tonight is uh, is going to wrap up a little earlier than expected. Uh, although I say earlier than expected, it's about midnight. It's probably going to be another half an hour. But yeah, thank you so much for popping in. Um, appreciate seeing you in here. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you. I will check that message on Instagram. And we'll uh, yeah, see that. Thank you so much for popping in there. Um, yeah, I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> um, we'll see you again soon, man. Um, oh, Bob is only he good. You made homemade pizza tonight. Can you please email me a slice? I would appreciate that very much. Uh, yeah, clear skies. Clear skies, brother. Yeah, because these are... This is our sky. <laughs> We know we're okay. To be fair, while we were promised clear skies, I think we, we, we really made the most of it with uh, being able to look at the moon and having it punch through the clouds as much as possible. Otherwise, this would be if I was just doing some deep sky tonight, uh, we would be the clouds would be just way too much, unfortunately. However, with the moon, I'm happy to do a little more too much longer and uh. Let's see, let's bump up the exposure again. Um, uh, at, the, uh, at the expense of some detail, let's go up to a tenth of a second. Right. So this might uh, kind of start getting a little brighter or more intense as the clouds kind of peter in and out. But this is a, a, a view of the moon that I haven't seen in quite a while and actually wasn't sure how this was going to uh, how this was going to turn out with the uh, this camera and scope combination because this has only been used for uh, for deep sky. So looking at the moon is, uh, is it almost feels sometimes it's overlooked you know um, as much as astrophotographers hate can hate the moon for uh, ruining their uh, ruining their nights. Um, you know, it's it's also also good to uh, take a moment and look at look at the moon because it is incredibly interesting and there's way more to the moon than you can see with a camera because taking some shorter exposures. And adjusting your saturation levels, and let me fix this. Let's drop the exposure again because we are getting a minor clearing in the clouds, a little thinning there. Um, you know, you can start to pull out color details and get that titanium oxide and the, uh, the iron oxide in the uh, in the moon, and pull out those blues and uh, those rusty colors out of there. You know, you can see that the moon isn't just this uh, this kind of gray blob, this gray hunk of rock in the sky. Let me just come up there a little bit. Right? I'm using a slower speed because if it just if the moon zips by, uh, you know, it could as as large as large as it seems in the sky, you can easily lose it in a, uh, a high focal length with a telescope, and we're just under a meter in focal length. And that's, uh, you know, cutting this in half there. Old, the old balls. The old balls, how are you? It's not the dark side of the moon. No, no, no. We would need, uh, we would need a special spaceship to, to get to the dark side of the moon. But uh, if there wasn't a, if I couldn't get a DMCA strike, we'd play some Pink Floyd right now. But uh, you can't play that music. So, some generic music. It looks like the bottom of an orange. Yeah, it does resemble uh, the, the pitted, um, kind of mottled area of, a, of an orange there.
I think it's it, it is incredibly beautiful. I mean, there's so many, like as the you know when you have a full moon, it's great to look at. But again, with this Terminator that uh, is exposing the the shadows and the depth of these craters, I think it's uh, it's incredible. So we can actually you know it's a little bit of a digital zoom, but we can get in a little closer there. And actually, here there's a there's a great because you can see. Um, example of an impact crater which was face on so you can see when there is a crater without okay I don't have a little point right here but you can see these two prominent craters here and they have these tiny little peaks in the middle and basically those are the impact craters that are pretty much face on uh, they're hitting the moon whereas these other round ones that don't have that that peak in the middle those ones are coming at, uh, at a different angle However, due to uh, some sciencey words and other uh, mathematical configurations, even if the uh, um, asteroid or a meteorite hits the uh, the moon at an angle, it's still going to create a, uh, a circular crater afterwards. It's uh, only more identified by its uh, angle, by how much uh, how prominent that peak is in the middle from the rebound of uh, of the impact there. And there is, uh, there are probably there are more people who can better explain it uh, than I can. But that is about my most rudimentary explanation of how some of the craters on the moon have these um, these towering peaks in the middle, and some don't. So yeah, the uh, the way how the light, how the sun is hitting the the moon, you can just see um, how deep some of these craters actually are, versus when they, it's a full moon and you're only seeing uh, the light hitting directly in there. Beautiful, great pick. Wow, amazing. I am. I love this. The shot of the moon. Like I really, like you, you. You might have thought that I would hang out on Mars for so long. However, um, I'm happy to sit on the moon um, for as long as possible. And it does look the, the clouds are still, still hanging out there. And that's uh, that is unfortunate. And it looks like we're. I was kind of hoping that there would be a couple more uh, deep space shots um, for the night, but. Let me, let me pull up another image here. So I mean, we were earlier tonight. We did go over to the Triangulum Galaxy, which was uh, our next nearest neighbor. But that's always a, a favorite because it just fits so well with this uh, this scope and camera combination. So this was an uh, earlier. 10 minute exposure from uh, about an hour and a half ago. And we also went back to the to the Bubble Nebula, which is another uh, favorite target of mine that has been unavailable to me for quite a while. But was uh, very happy to, to get this target again. And that was uh, that was earlier in the evening, another ten minute exposure. So the night wasn't without some uh, some deep sky images that kind of came earlier in the evening. So we're happy to get those. Um, Thank you for your help with this view of the moon. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. It is my pleasure to bring these images to you guys and explain them in as much detail as possible as I can at the moment. Uh, like I said, I'm still, you know, I'm independently studying um, astronomy, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a bit of a slower process just because you know work and life can get in the way. So, um, and the more I kind of do this, and the more I want to research specific targets, that's where my knowledge base grows, and it's also just for me again sharing it with you guys, and I mean. You know, I appreciate all of you who have come in and stuck around. Even if you just have it on in the background, I mean, it's just a, you know, a, an image might catch your eye. And if you got a question, for sure, ask me a ask me a question. There's no, uh, there's no real format to this uh, kind of this this live stream that I do. It's just more of um, I'm going to take some images. We're going to talk about some images, and sometimes we'll get distracted with the conversation, and we'll circle back to the image eventually. So. 
yeah, there's a, a totally free environment to, you know, ask ask away. And if I and if I don't know the answer, I'll I'll do what I can to better answer it the next time. You know, it's uh, just one of those one of those ways of learning. It's just uh, you know, you know, picking up on on the fly. So you know, there is the the knowledge base that's there, but there's always there's tons more to learn. And I'm excited for the whole process. And I'm excited for all the, uh, you know, what's uh, what we're coming up to, what we, uh, we want to do. And um, actually, one thing that I was looking for last night, which I didn't have, was to explain, was to show you guys what a uh, focusing mask does for a star. Usually, a star is a, it's going to be a point of light in there. However, when you put this uh, focusing mask on your uh, on your scope, it creates these larger diffraction spikes and this is the star navi in cassiopeia but it has that batonoff star mask which when those three when the the vertical line and the cross all intersect in the same area you have achieved perfect focus so um because if you if you're kind of focusing the star with your eye and trying to pinpoint the very smallest you know circumference of when you see the star reaching there it can be a bit of a guesswork whereas when you throw this uh this focusing mask on top of your in front of your scope you're able to better you know that your stars are in focus and at times um throughout the night the focus can shift and that's where maybe using an automatic focuser can come into come into play um however for the what I enjoy about this scope is that um, it holds its focus fairly well throughout the night. And really, I only have to adjust focus, um, you know, after a day or, or so. And it's not too bad. Like, I mean, it, it's it, the longest I've left the scope, it has uh, not even, it hasn't significantly gone out of focus. So I'm very happy with how this uh, telescope has, uh, has progressed and how it's, uh, it's treated intruded things but yeah so it's um, you know you're in in proper focus and while this image of the moon might go in and out of focus that's just because of the atmosphere um, that uh, that's constantly roiling across our uh, our field of view so there are like those brief moments of when you can see when it's nice and clear but that is most of the time where you see this whole this undulating image and it's not scope that's moving it's um, it's just the entire atmosphere around it so that is also why stars twinkle it's uh, when you have a, a very disturbed atmosphere it's hard to get a nice crystal clear sharp image of uh, uh, of your of your target whereas there are telescopes that have adaptive op optics and that is a system where it uh, where a laser is pointed towards your target and it automatically adjusts the mirrors in the scope to um, compensate for all these little um, well you can see like just how it's bubbling and moving it'll just it'll move the mirror um, just as quick as the atmosphere is uh, is moving um, I don't have that kind of money <laughs> so it's uh, for backyard astronomers to be Combating that is that they take a video image of their uh, of the of the moon or of a planet, and once those images are processed, they are able to um, cut out all the wobbly wibbly wobbly images, and um, you're left with just whatever those those brief moments of calm in the atmosphere uh, and on your target there, and it just processes those images together. And that's why you um, you get a much sharper image of the moon. So if I was to take just a single image, chances are it's going to be a little blurry, a little uh, distorted, and it's going to look all right, but it's not going to look great. Whereas for some people, will take uh, you know tens of thousands of, of, of frames of an image from a from a video and put that together um, in a program, and it's going to bring you a sharper image of the moon or of your, of your planet there. So, just all these different factors to kind of consider for uh, astrophotography. And just, yeah, different challenges that come with, uh, with different targets. Like, 
you know, if you're shooting a galaxy, you're going to want to shoot in broadband. If you're shooting a nebula, you want to shoot in narrowband. Every different target is going to have its own challenges, its own way of processing it. So it's, it's a dynamic kind of hobby to be uh, working on these, uh, on these images there. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, happy to be, to be looking at the moon. I mean, there's, there's tons of areas to be looking at. And even at this, uh, this kind of focus on there, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, there's, there's no shortage of areas to be looking at on the moon. So I think really when you are doing photography that, um, the Terminator is going to give you your most contrast and uh, kind of the most details that you're going to get a better a better sense of just how deep these craters actually are because being f as far away as we are from the moon it's it, it, it's almost incomprehensible for us to f just get a, 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 a scale of how large these are we see the moon as this tiny point in the, in the sky and yeah just kind of almost take for granted how large these impact craters are. And I think what I'll try and do tomorrow is uh, we're going to be faced with the uh, the same moon. The Terminator is going to move a little bit there and we're going to get some uh, some new details kind of coming through there. Uh, totally enjoyed tonight. Thanks Sunshine. Love you. <laughs> Love you too, Mom. Appreciate you stopping by, um, and, and very thankful you uh, have figured out Twitch, so you can join in on here and do what you can to um, wonderfully try to embarrass me. It doesn't work. I'm not embarrassed. I love my mother. I love my father. They're fantastic people. Yeah, more examples of craters that have, um, you know, those direct hits and other ones that uh, are that were coming at a bit of an angle there. And it's just the, the depth of these. It's like you can see the, the mountainous regions. There are some areas that once the, um, you know, as the Terminator moves across, you can see these, these peaks and valleys of entire ridges that you don't uh, usually notice. So, yeah, once those... Uh, once those areas are a little more or a bit more visible, we'll, uh, you know, views willing, we'll, um, we'll take a look at some other areas. I mean, let's see, let's move over. Oh, way. Now we're moving over to the, uh, the Sea of Tranquility which was uh, in the areas of the Apollo landing. Now, at this, res um, at this focal length, we really can't even see them from the landing sites from Earth because it is just so, it is very, it's very tiny. They're very uh, small objects. And not until you get like images from NASA that are using like, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter that you're gonna be able to see where these uh, landing sites are. Because again, as small as this looks, it's, uh, you know, these craters are you know, enormous, enormous craters where you could probably fit a small town inside them. So, I mean, around here would be, uh, would be the area. However, we can't see it. But again, I, I would I would double check exactly where it would be to kind of um, get a good look at, at that at that section there. But you know, this the Sea of Tranquility that's the, the general area where the uh, where some of the Apollo missions had landed. Yeah, we're shooting at uh, so this is going at about. Looks like on average about 20 frames per second, but you can still see just that uh, that movement in the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, I mean the clouds are still out there. 
those clouds are out in full effect, so we're probably going to uh, to wrap things up shortly. But um, no, I do. I thank you guys so much for all your support. Um, thank you guys for for following me. Uh, thanking. Thank you very much for the people who have subscribed to the channel. Um, appreciate that immensely, because uh, you know it's it's not a it's not a requisite to be um, you know to to throw out a subscription here, but you know to let you know with full transparency of what these donations um, and, and um, subscriptions go towards. It will be towards equipment for better images, um, for better uh, upgrades to the astronomy to the astrophotography equipment so that we can get better images of, uh, of space and you know it's not going to be i'm not gonna splash out the, the the money to you know improve lighting and things like that because it, for the most part here you don't need to see me so much as i want you to see um you know see the moon and see the stars and see the nebulae um and you know willing um, another comet that might come through um, the inner solar system that might be visible from our area for the uh, the latest comet um, neo wise it wasn't available to me um, easily and for the most part I didn't actually I did not see it myself however um, there, it's been so well documented by so many astrophotographers and shared uh, countless areas I mean, you know, it, it's great to see how many people have taken an interest in astrophotography because of, pardon me, because of this comet. I mean, the last great comet that I saw was uh, was Hale Bop and Hayakutake back in, uh, in in the late '90s, and I still have very vivid memories of seeing Hayakutake just silently sitting there up in the sky, and it was just it was an eerie feeling seeing that and knowing that this. Uh, this visitor from another area in our solar system was hanging out in our sky for uh, for that time, and you know, um, Neo wise didn't get quite to uh, to that magnitude, but I mean, it did capture a lot of attention, and because we and the way how um, cameras have improved since then is uh, it's amazing just how much detail is possible. Um, how much um, you know just how powerful the cameras can be now and how sensitive they are that we're able to pick up all these uh, these finer details within uh, within an image there and you know CMOS cameras the uh, have come a long way and I'm just looking at Stellarium actually something's kind of coming up in the view there looks like a jellyfish in there. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, camera technology has improved so much that, um, you know, it's, uh, even with a mobile phone, you're able to get some decent images of the, of the night sky. And I think that just opens it up to, like, casual viewers uh, so much. Um, James Ray, badass bubble nebula shot. Great stream. Uh, I was only two weeks into astrophotography. When Neo I showed up, I got lucky. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, with uh, some of the other comments that had come through, and we were, we were hoping there were going to be some some great shows, and then they just kind of, you know, they broke up and fizzled out, unfortunately. So it, it is tough once the, uh, you know, when the comments get closer to the sun, and you got to hope that if they are um, substantial enough, that they're going to hold up. So we can get uh, some better views on their uh, on their way back around there. But yeah, it's um, it was a yeah, it's a great great comet for um, all levels of astrophotography, and a lot of people got some incredibly detailed images. Um, there are some who had uh, shown that had shown the progression of Neo Eyes across the sky, and that was some amazing those are amazing shots and dedication as well. Uh, and also just the sheer uh, luck of having some wonderfully clear skies available at that time. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're at this point at the moment. So, it, uh, what was promised to be a clear night um, 
however, has been mildly marred by uh, these clouds. And, you know, the, uh, the plan was that, yes, the moon was going to be uh, in the way for, uh, for a little bit, but I was going to pick a target afterwards that was going to be more towards the, uh, the northeast and, you know, try and get a, a better shot there. However, that has, uh, with these clouds rolling in, that's all, you know, that's all changed there. So, and it even looks like they're coming from like the northwest, which, uh, that's a bit of a change in the weather there. So we'll, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on things because uh, we'll do the same thing tomorrow night. And, um, you know, but <laughs> it's, uh, what what support it's still it's still saying my forecast is still telling me that it's going to be uh, you know clear skies right now, but it's not. <laughs> so we're uh, you know, we're at the mercy. And this little uh, security camera is uh, is an absolute wonder. I love it so much, and it's come in handy uh, so often, and more so the very first night that I actually was using it because this was when uh, a time when the ASI Air was kind of having uh, some problems with the, um, with the software and my meridian flip, actually not even my meridian flip, I chose a target and the scopes went, the scope spun in the other direction. And luckily I was watching it on the camera and stopped it and went outside and kind of reset things. But had I not been, had I been like, oh, okay, ASI Air is working fine, let's punch it in and go and ignore it. Um, yeah, there could have been some serious damage happening to my mount, to my scope, my camera. So, yeah, this uh, this camera kind of paid for itself immediately on its first night, thankfully. So, we'll keep that around. And it's just, uh, the brand is Tapo, or Tapo. And it's just a, a wireless uh, security camera. Sorry, not wireless. Well, it, it's operated by Wi-Fi. And it's powered by the mains. And it's, uh, you know, it's worked out really well. I can connect it through the laptop as well so I'm not uh, you know feeding it through my phone and kicking it out to the laptop and also it's uh, it works out like that as a network camera and uh, you know there is the the day mode and the night mode however I think the night mode is going to be blown out by the moon that's not too bad but when I'm looking at it without the uh, <clears throat> without the infrared filter we can uh, we definitely we can better see any clouds that are rolling in you can see some prominent clouds uh, at the moment, but on my screen it is easier to see the clouds rolling in when we are in, in day mode. But yeah, that's, uh, that is what we're dealing with right now, which is not favorable. So, we're going to hop back to the moon and... Actually, it's, uh, let's see here. So there's a, there's a better, let's, uh, here, let's come back to the, our main. Let's go back here. We got everything on display. We have Stellarium kind of kicking through there. It's rolling through the, uh, rolling by, rolling through the stars. And I have a, a new planetarium program that I'm going to uh, try out over the next couple of days, which uh, apparently has a little less strain on the, on the PC. So I will uh, hopefully, although for the most part, the, okay, there it is, yeah, there, there goes the encoder. So you know what we're going to do? We, uh, we know what Stellarium looks like. We're going to, we're going to close Stellarium because as soon as I came back to that, I was getting I was getting warnings. So, if uh, if for some reason all of a sudden everything kind of clunks out, we'll be back in a, a hot second. But it seems to be working already there. So, uh, also the internet has held up, and it just it might I don't know if it's if it's if it is uh, Twitch's traffic or if it's just general traffic in the area. Um, I guess at maybe peak time that things are kind of conking out there. But uh, it seems to be a little more stable at the moment, so we'll take it for for what it is, and we'll. Uh, I'm gonna stop this as well, so I'm not. Uh, 
All right, so we are on a, a static image of the moon right now. It's just the that's just the one shot there because we are loaded up with clouds, as you can see there. So we are going to um, slowly wrap things up here, and I'm going to see if there's anybody online that we can uh, that we can raid at the moment. But I'm not sure if there is anybody on my list, and I also don't know how to. Um, Good night, moon. Good night, stars. We'll, uh, let's see who is around. And also, I don't know how to search for this. Well, I don't want to search for random people. I do want to try and support other people who I have uh, kind of grown accustomed to. But it looks like a lot of people are offline at the moment. And I hate to leave you guys in a lurch. Let's see. And this also might. I don't know who these people are. Who is this? People alive? Don't know. No, unfortunately, I do apologize. I am. Yeah, I am going to uh, to wrap things up, and uh, we'll just kind of end things here. And I do. I thank you guys immensely, uh, so much for. Uh, those who are tuning in for the whole stream, those who come in just for a, a little hello, and those who are lurking, thank you guys very much. Uh, we will be back tomorrow night at about the same time, and because the moon will come up a little later in the evening, uh, it'll give us a little bit of time. Actually, I might even try to start, what's the weather supposed to be tomorrow? Because actually there was a, sort of some questionable weather. Um, tomorrow... Tomorrow looks to be about the same, uh, same as tonight there, so we'll expect clouds to roll in at some point. Uh, but it is it is mainly clear, and Thursday is looking iffy, uh, if not uh, completely, uh, uh, completely out of the question. So we'll uh, maybe we'll just take Thursday night off. But Wednesday tomorrow night Wednesday is supposed to be nice and clear, so we'll do this again tomorrow night on Wednesday, and I'll try to maybe start a little earlier maybe seven o'clock Greenwich Mean Time so we have a little more time without the moon and uh, yeah I think we'll, we'll try that there I'll uh, change the times uh, pop up the notification there but thank you guys very much I appreciate you uh, to no end and thank you for those who have subscribed thank you to those who have followed um, and we will have some more fun with the moon we'll have some more fun with, uh, with the stars and we will we'll just have some, some more fun with each other. So I've been Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. And I am not here to change the world. I'm here to share the universe. Thank you guys so much. And we will see you tomorrow night uh, about 7 o'clock. So take care and good night.